do you want do you no. want do you want a bit of silence? Nah, no, no. We we let we let these we let this rolling. We let this, we let this rolling. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Welcome to um, another Chit and Chat podcast. Welcome to another Chit and Chat podcast. Welcome to the Chit and Chat podcast. I thought um, we changed the name of it. <laughs> Not yet. We'll change we'll change it after this Welcome one. Welcome to right? the CAC po- t- podcast. Welcome to the CAC podcast. The CAC podcast. The CAC podcast. The CAC podcast. The CAC cast. Oh, podcast. <laughs> um, if you guys. Are, if you guys are listening to this on YouTube, um, surprise, we're on Spotify now, so that's a plus for us. Yay. Progress. Woohoo. Um, that being said, I'm your truly hero, also known as Jeff, and who are you lovely people? Uh, I'm the Squish. Uh, it's, it's more people. It's, 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 I can, I can see no one else. I guess no one else is going to go. Nope, it's just, just Squish. Just Squish. No. I thought so too. I was gonna wait, and he's like up the squish. Uh huh. Yeah. Uh-huh. Anyway, what's up, guys? Yeah. I'm Knuckle Bummer or Marcus. Steamboat Taco or Aldo. And I'm the man from another world, Issa Kyle. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Are you all hot springs? No. <laughs> oh. He's not the hot springs episode. He's like, you know. No, no, um, no, no, no. The hot, the, the Issa Kyle where a dude reincarnates as a hot spring. <laughs> Seriously? <laughs> It's fucking amazing. <laughs> <laughs> so he's a sentient hot spring. Yeah. Oh and, geez. And and the more like the more he levels up, he turns into like a spa. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> he's that's rad. neat. Yeah. So how does he level up? Uh, I think by like helping more people. Like the more people that get in him, <laughs> the more the more he levels up. Okay. <laughs> the more people that get in him. Okay. <laughs> yeah. He's a hot Get in or get out. <laughs> I saw a really weird one. Uh, I was reincarnated in a, another world as a sex worker. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, I started, wait, I started reading that. Yeah. Wait, what? Yeah. I got reincarnated in another world as a sex worker? Yeah. That sounds interesting. It's a high school girl. It sounds like a hentai. Uh, I mean, of it's course it's much a high school girl. Is... Yeah. yeah. Obviously. It's Joshikase. Uh, but yeah, like her and her friend. Oh, so metamorphosis? Yeah, so her, yeah, her, yeah. her and her friend get sent to another world, but the dude gets like the the cheap like protag power and like it's his destiny to go kill the demon king. So she thinks she doesn't have a power, so she just decides mm-hmm. she's gonna be a uh, like a sex worker. She's just gonna make a living. She just decides like, well, I guess I'm gonna get dick. Yeah, she's yeah. She, well, like that's what she was doing before she got sent to another world. Oh, uh, so she was a slut beforehand. Yeah, so she's oh, like, okay. I'm just gonna keep doing a living, doing what I do, but then she realizes that her her power is to steal people's skills when she sleeps with them. <laughs> All right. So she's gonna fuck God. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, that is that is the weirdest. You know what? No, I can't really say much. I I've I've, I've heard weirder. Really? Like like the one where a girl reincarnates into another world and she's a spider. So what? <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, I saw, I saw, that. I, I saw that trailer uh, and stuff. So the the trailer for the anime didn't look that good, but I did have somebody recommend it as a manga, uh, and they said it was really good because you actually get a sense of her progression as she levels up from being a spider to being a, a better spider. <laughs> Is she? I wonder if she ever becomes like a like a spider woman. <clears throat> Spider person? No, you can't fuck everybody. the spider squish. I can do whatever I <laughs> All want. Alright, so that's, it for, that's it for another Chit Chat <laughs> podcast, everybody. <laughs> so, so for that one hand, it I was fun. Do fist the spider. <laughs> oh, ah, <you're> right. <laughs> I know, I know which one you're talking about. Yeah, which I, know I, you. I, I, I fucking god damn it! What's wrong with Never me? Never forget. That's that's a great one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this, this, come on. This, this, not, this, not the hentai Welcome podcast. This. That's till after. All right, that's, that's we should be... do that. We should have a hentai podcast. <laughs> that's gonna. Be... It's like a. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me throw this out there. It's like, it's like, it's like a book club. So we, on it. We watch, we watch a hentai, and then we we do a podcast about it. All right, I give this seven out of right. seven out of ten paps. <laughs> 7 out of 10 faps oh my gosh 10 out of 10 would fap again <laughs> you know that's oh, 10 man, out of 10 
You know, you know that's pretty much what interspecies reviewers is. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> is that the new? Oh, is yeah. that the new anime? Yeah, it's just dudes that go to like brothels and then they review them. <laughs> uh, I heard it's uncensored in Taiwan. <laughs> oh my god, yes. I mean, like, cool. like fully, <laughs> fully uncensored in Taiwan. No. Jeff. By All right. Way. So um, I'm, 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 I'm re-railing, I'm re-railing this train. Um, Aldo, how, how's your week been? Was the last time we talked and stuff. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was good. I, uh, what do? Oh yeah, I kept, I keep trying to play Pokemon because I keep waiting for it to get good. Um, uh huh. It still hasn't. Uh, <laughs> uh, but I've been playing more Tekken. I've been playing more Persona. Uh, I also recently heavily invested in the Yakuza series by buying every game. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So I bought all like the 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 four games that are out on the PS4. Um, all of them like brand new, none of that PS hits bullshit. Um, so that was pretty cool. And then I pre-ordered the remastered collection that'll be coming out uh, next month, I think. Okay. Oh yeah. And then also uh, I met a bunch of people up here in Portland, um, and we started playing Final Fantasy together. Oh nice. Like fourteen. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh, a bunch cool. of them decided to get into the game, self doing like a, like a world visit. So I'm just kind of helping them level up and whatever. Wow, that's what's up. Like yeah. doing random fates and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Just helping them kind of go through the story and helping them on like some of the missions and shit. And that stuff. Is um is inter part is um interworld partying a thing in Final Fantasy XIV now? Yeah. Like you party up with people from another world. Well, you well what I'm doing is I do a world visit. <laughs> Uh, so you go, so you go to like one of the first three starter towns, and from the big etherite crystal, you can select another world on the same server. Yeah. So like on Primal. Um. So I, so my character is just hanging out on that server. I didn't do like an official server move. Um. Yeah. So, so yeah, so I can party up. The only thing I can't do really is I can't do like the the big old mog, the the cackpot. I think is what it is. Yeah, um, the jumbo cockpot. Yeah, so I can't do that, and I can't join their free company because I'm already part of the one that we're in. Um, yeah. And even then, I couldn't technically join it because it's uh, not on my home world. But apart from that, I can do like everything else. Yeah, like one of the best things I like doing about going to another world is like just going to the market board because there's some things that are like so much cheaper. Oh in yeah. Another world compared to ours. Yeah, because we're stuff. we're in a hardcore server. Which I didn't, oh, yeah. I didn't realize that, um, and that's also why I get kicked out for not having my rotation. Um, <laughs> never forget, never forget. <laughs> oh, wait, our, wait, our servers are hardcore servers? Yeah. Yeah. It's a legacy server, dude. Yeah, ours is like a like a raiding server and shit like that. Oh, shit. Yeah. I was looking at a server, because the kids, I, I, I call them kids, they're all like 19 and 20 and whatever. Yeah, they're um, kids. Yeah. yeah, they're kids. They, but they wanted to go in an RP server. Uh, so I was doing some research, uh, looking at which, like, servers would be La good for them. Lamia? I think Lamia? Uh, they're on Hyperion. Okay, so Hyperion's our, our, our RP server then. Yeah. Um, uh, that's but yeah, so. So that's, that's what I've been doing, just kind of hanging out with them while they're, while they're playing, and when they need help, I'll just, like, drop off whatever the shit I'm doing is, and go beat up whoever's bullying them. <laughs> what's, what's your what's your um, progress in the cards of overall Final Fantasy? Uh, I'm supposed to go find somebody in Shadowbringers. Like I'm st I'm still at the beginning of of Shadowbringers. Um, like I played it that first week and then never never went back to it because um mm. cause I want to level my my Gunbreaker up to like seventy before I take on the story because I want to do that mission with or that story with uh with Gunbreaker. Hey man, that's what I did. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> so I think that's probably where I got the idea from. Um, but yeah. Cool. All right, um, Kyle, how's your week been? Uh, so I got laid off, so that was cool. <laughs> uh, Sorry. Oh, neat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you got laid. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> I wish. Uh, so I've been playing a fuck ton of Final Fantasy fourteen. I went from the beginning of Heaven's Ward at like level uh, 54 and I am now level 69 at the beginning of Stormblood. Nice. <laughs> yeah. uh, I am really enjoying it. Uh, as somebody who 
never thought I was ever going to get into MMOs or anything like that after I played WoW. Uh, this is really refreshing. So, uh, yeah. I like being a samurai. That, that just, re- that, that means I need to add you on my friends list. It does. Yeah, I never really, I haven't had hit Kyle in our f- friend list group for like, um, I don't know, since he started playing. Yeah. Like you just, we just, I just, you just barely added me, I think. Yeah. Uh, when we went to go do, uh, what was the dumb one that we did? It was the vault, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it was uh, Thornton. It was Thor- Oh, yeah, King Thornton. Yeah, we did Thornton. We did yeah. And then we did uh, Great Cool Bowl together. Yeah. Uh, uh, fun times. Uh, let's see. Uh, also, I started watching uh, No Guns Life with, with Jeff. We, we made it into the first two episodes, and boy, does that look like it's going to be a fun ride. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what was it called? Uh, no Guns Life. It is the show... Uh, about a hard-boiled detective with a gun for a head. <laughs> oh, you were telling me about this earlier, Dave. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and it looks super fucking rad and absolutely up my alley. <laughs> <laughs> it really is. Like, I really dig it. And we're only, like, two episodes in. I'm only two episodes in. Uh, but yeah, that's, right. that's my week. Cool. Um, Knuckle Bomber handing it to you. Oh, so, remember how I was watching One Piece, guys? I finally caught up. I was hoping it was going to get to a spot where, like, uh, nothing super interesting was going to be going on. So that I could just take a nice, solid break from it and just focus on other things. Uh, no, that didn't happen. (laughs) Everything just got more intense, and I was like, shit. Now I gotta wait a couple more days for another episode. So, so like, damn it, it got me. So, Knuckle Bomber, now that you've caught up, what fragments of your life remain? <laughs> well, I hit 80 on Final Fantasy, finally. Uh, played some more Tekken. Amazing. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> dude, I'm, li- I'm, dude I'm, living, I'm living life again. <laughs> <laughs> You know, whatever whatever it was that I did two months ago. <laughs> <laughs> At least you watch One Piece. <laughs> yeah, I guess that's true. I uh, also watched the new, uh, the two OVAs for Haikyuu and the new episode. Now I can catch up on other things. Right on. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much for me. All right, uh, Squish. All right, so I've been. I actually went back to a game that I've been meaning to to play or to keep playing. Uh, I kind of have a hard time like sitting down and actually finishing games. Uh, that's one, like one of my biggest problems. So what happened uh, is I went back and actually went and beat Red Dead Redemption Two. Nice. Uh, that was that was interesting. That was. Uh, I'm in the I'm in the epilogue right now, but I I I really really did like that game. I can see why uh, people were saying it was a really good game. Have you tried the online yet? No, I have. It's really. It's just like it. GTA Five. <laughs> <laughs> Which just, so it was like, because I so I did enjoy. Uh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I, I enjoyed uh, Red Dead Online back on the first one. You know, uh, Red Dead Redemption, not Revolver. Yeah, I I hope yeah. they bring back the zombie stuff. Oh, that was so fun. That was fun. Yeah, I hope they bring back the zombie stuff. That was that was fun. They had like a survival mode with like all. It was really fun. I hope they bring that back. Yeah. Um, Anything else, Swish? No, just been just catching up on anime. Also, I watched Haikyuu. Um, I want to maybe uh, start watching some dumb isekai stuffs. <laughs> like, <laughs> I don't. I don't know. It's just. It's just. I have some. I have some free time. So I should I should catch up on stuff. All right. Uh, so you should watch everybody's favorite top ten anime of the year and watch uh, Sword Art Online. Oh my God, no! Mm. <laughs> um, yeah, dude. Well, have, have you seen you Have you time? seen Sword Art Online, Squish? Hmm? Oh, I haven't seen uh, it. Well, you can't you can't dislike Sword Art Online if you haven't seen it. Yeah, that's at least true. Jeff can say that much. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's, that's true. Every that's every other arc in that show is good. Like that's the problem. It goes from like the first arc is like really good. Uh, then the second arc, you're just like, what is this bullshit? <laughs> then the next arc is like really good, 
And then it, the, the next star catcher that you're like, okay, we're back to this bullshit? <laughs> <laughs> like when they go into the Call of Duty MMO, that shit was rad. Uh, I heard the, the death gun one? Yeah, Hell yeah. where the primary no, antagonist is death gun. <laughs> yeah, dude. It's so edgy. It's beautiful. Yeah. I want to watch the standalone, the, the standalone uh, sword art gun galia one. Oh, yeah, yeah with the lollies one. with guns? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Go for it, Matthew. <laughs> Jeff is just like not having it over there. <laughs> He's just fucking job? dying. Fucking figures. Listen, man. <laughs> <laughs> fucking figures. It's like, there's only ever one thing I'm ever going to object. That's never going to be sorted out online. <laughs> Alright, um, speaking of, speaking of like, watching things to solidify your hatred, so, my week's been consisting of watching Gundam Seed. Um... Gross. Yeah, <laughs> like, okay. So, um, Kyle. Yeah. You watched some. You were you were there when I where you were watching some episodes of Gunna Seed with me, right? Yeah. And you said that uh, you mentioned like how it's just bad writing that makes um, Flay, which Flay is kind of a bitch. Yeah, uh, how, like uh, just bad writing. Like there there are characters that are bad, and then there are characters that you can tell are just uh, there to move the plot along, and therefore don't have any, like, actual... Like, they don't feel like human beings. They just feel like uh, plot devices, which is what I feel like Flay is. Like, she's so bad, but it's also obviously so transparent that she's just there to be a plot device and not an actual person, That like which is why I can't, like, hate on her. Now, the episode I, I last saw, all right? So there's a scene where Kiriyamada, all right? Why new bitch protagonist, okay? Um, he's actually, like, hurting uh, Sai, you know, L Lil Gendo. Okay. And he's, like, I think he's, like, pulling his arm or whatever behind his back or something like that. You know, like a... He's got him in the hold. lock. The police yeah. lock, yeah. Yeah, and then, like, essentially saying, like, yeah, Flay's my bitch now or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm, and she's I'm like, sorry. Did you... Hold on. Let me rewind a split second here. Did you say Little Gendo? Yeah. Because it looks like young Gendo Igari. Okay, because all I, all I saw in my head was like a peanut style cartoon of Little Gendo. <laughs> <laughs> like, Little Gendo, are you tricking the nerve students again into doing your bidding for you? No. No, it'd be, it'd be, it'd be more like wom 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 <laughs> No, because you have to hear the adults because they need to call him Little Gendo. <laughs> <laughs> Little Gendo, wom 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 No, no, you. <laughs> anyways, but continue. Anyways, um. So, like, it just goes, it's just, like, Gundam Seed is just so far terrible. I am still, I still need to finish watching it just because of obligation to myself. Um, the Gundams, the mobile suits are dope as fuck. Um, it has good music for, like, the opening and ending. And I cannot wait to be done with the series. <laughs> you know how you um, can be done with the series super quick? How so? Just stop fucking watching it. I can't, cause I got, I got it, I got to I got I got to solidify. Here's, here's the thing, Jeff. You don't have to do anything. I know it's not, it's not about having to. It's about wanting to. Well, you said you have to. Fair. I apologize. <laughs> I want to finish this to just show that I don't. To just further show that I don't like this. It's like, like, do you do you hate watch anything? No. I have better things to do with my time. <laughs> well, yeah, obviously, but if, if, exactly. if, if, if you if you don't like if you don't like something, you have to like make sure that you have a very valid point as why you don't like something. No, I don't. I don't have to justify it to anybody. That's why I hate JoJo. <laughs> well, this is why I just, this is why I justify it to myself. <laughs> I don't have to justify right? anything to anybody. You don't like it, you don't like it. You just don't fucking. Yeah, like it. but this this You're this, like, this, no, this is for myself, not for anybody else, but for me. This is for myself. All I hear is, is a only. waste of time, but okay. <laughs> hey. I mean, nobody here will change your mind. <laughs> He's still going for it. Oh Fair. my god, that you're like, hey Marcus, come check this out, and it's the scene where he starts fucking crying, <laughs> and he's just like floating in space. <laughs> it's just cry. Yeah, dude, and then he gets to the window, and he's just like, <laughs> Oh, here, I'll, 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 send, I'll send the link up on the Discord and show you all the, this, that crying scene. But other than um, watching, 
watching uh, Gundam Seed. I've been getting back into um, getting back into drawing PK, which I'm actually really happy about. Um, it's been a long time coming. Um, with that being said, holy shit, I need to make sure that my drawing game is always on point. Like, I at least have to draw something every day, you know? Yes. Um, you getting sloppy? Yeah, I feel like I'm getting sloppy. There it is, Aldo. Um, cool, I'm not going to watch it. <laughs> you should watch it. <laughs> yeah, I re- you should watch it. <laughs> you should watch it. it. It's, a, it's a piece of history. <laughs> it's a piece of anime history. Okay, well, I'm watching it now. Um, and then I've been catching up on uh, Final Fantasy. Um, got level 80 with my machinist. And I'm doing some weaving class. And I'm also doing the Moogle quest. So you get that Moogle dance. A lot of Final Fantasy has been going on in this whole... Just this whole chat right now. Oh my god, the animation on that hand is ass. <laughs> Wait for it. Um, after that, just um, recording more stuff for Evil Squirtle. Like... Um, the let's play I'm doing for Mega Man Battle Number Two, and yeah, that's pretty. That's pretty much been it for me. Just making some, doing some business. 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 Yeah. All right. I'm glad that we all shared that little tidbit <laughs> of ourselves and whatnot. What's up? It's just the way you said that. Like a fucking school teacher is tired of listening to kids whine. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm happy we shared that tidbit of our lives. Let's but Mister, but Mister Southpaw, you don't understand. <laughs> Naruto is garbage. <laughs> He's just perpetuating a system of violence by continuing an economy based on child warfare. <laughs> <laughs> We're back on that. <laughs> I will always be on that. <laughs> I'll never not Whoa. be on that. <laughs> I will never give up See? on Ninja Jesus. But here, here's things. Here's the thing, Kyle. All right. Um, the thing about Naruto is that it's been a lot of Jeff. Well, like it's. Hold on, hear I'm, me out. I'm gonna stop you right here. Do you want this podcast to be three hours of me screaming it about hold Naruto? On. Hear me, hear me out. Hear me, hear me out real quick. All right. <laughs> yes, he wants that. <laughs> <laughs> Hear me out real quick, all right? He secretly does. Hear me out. I can see it on space. Hear me out. Now, Naruto was a lot of people's first animes, I, I don't and care. we all we each had our own first animes oh, that we got okay. into back when we were younger. So, um, guys, I want to make sure I want the topic. I want to talk about the topic of our first animes and what got us into anime, as well as the first time we actually, like, kind of just kind of embraced. The weeb culture. Jesus Christ! Did you guys see that segue? That was fucking powerful. <laughs> yeah, that was a, that was a good fucking segue. I'm impressed. Yeah. I'm shook. It was like boom, right in the kisser. I am shook. <laughs> I don't know if that's sarcasm or you're, not. <laughs> you're, you're, this is the best the podcast is ever gonna get. We should quit now. <laughs> we should just that quit segue now. was the like, pinnacle damn. of cack. <laughs> <laughs> so that's it for the podcast, everybody. <laughs> All right, so um, uh, who's who's the youngest out of us right now? I want to say Kyle. I'm Is 29. Kyle? Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> but you, you you actually I think you are the youngest because Marcus you're 29 right? Wait no, Marcus you're 28 right? Squishy. Yeah, I'll you be are 29 the, next month. Squishy, you are the youngest. Squish, Squish? Yeah. Yeah. You're the youngest. Yeah, I'm the youngest. Oh. So, Air for you talk first about your exp- your first anime and your first time embracing the weebdom. Okay. So, my first my first anime I ever watched was I watched Full Metal Alchemist at a, at a cousin's house. Um, so he was more the weeb, you know. He was. He was older than me, and and uh, fucking Adult Swim, of course, because yeah. Adult Swim had all the fucking anime. So I came over there one day and hung out with him. He's like, "Oh, we're gonna watch this. Like, we're gonna watch Adult Swim and shit." And he's like, "Okay, cool." And then, uh, and then fucking it came on, it, and I was like, I was so entranced by it. I was just like, "What is this?" I think it was the, I think it was the episode where. 
Gar first shows up. Oof. I think that's what it is. Um, or it was something. It had to do something with Gar. I don't really remember. Maybe it was the fight where he had with uh, what? What's the name in the sewer? Brad, uh, not Bradley. Uh, Greed. No. What's the what's the what's the muscle dude? Uh, Armstrong. Oh, Armstrong. Yeah. Okay. He fought Armstrong in the in the sewer, and he made the yeah, and then. And then after that, I, I went home, because I had cable also, and I'd wake up every morning before school, like <laughs> like an hour and a half before I had to be awake, so I could watch an, ep- an episode of, of Full Metal. <laughs> 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 um, that's, what, that's what really got me into... Uh, like into the weave them because then I would watch Inuyasha after also no no what it was no what it was is I would always wake up start watching it and it'd be the ending of Inuyasha was it the second ending where it shows Shishomaru yeah, like, yeah just the, like taking out the good one the good, one, the, the good ending <laughs> <laughs> the like, that, that, like say I, I, I mm, I'm so mixed with Inuyasha but <laughs> goddamn those endings yeah they're really good um, oh, yeah. So what happened after that is that uh, I think I started watching. I think I met you, Jeff. And I met yeah. you, and then I met you, and then it just my weebdom just spiraled out of control after that. <laughs> um, just because you started introducing <laughs> stuff, and then you're like, you're you're like the first person to show me manga and everything like that, also. Yeah, I remember, like, I let you borrow, like, one of my... I think it was either Rosario Vampire or Deers. Yeah. And you never gave me that copy back again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you just bought another one. I found it the other day. Yeah. Or I found it at my mom's house or something like that. Um, but, uh... But, yeah, that was the first time. That was just... That's what led me down the fucking... The, the hole of being a degenerate. <laughs> hey, look at me Dude, now. you were already a degenerate when we first started hanging out. <laughs> Yeah, I think the first time I actually sat down and watched an anime, like, actually went out of my way to watch an anime, it was Deers. Um, oh, shit. Yeah. Like, I actually, like, went on the internet and found all the episodes and watched it. Um, but yeah, Deer, Deers was the first anime, like, I probably watched all the way through. Like, right be- on. because Full Metal, you know, you just catch whatever episode was on, was on, uh... <laughs> was on fucking Adult Swim at the time. Yeah. Um, oh, no, no, wait, no, I take that back. I take that back. Uh, I had On Demand. I had uh, On Demand. Uh, uh, I had, uh, I had on, Camcast On Demand. So, actually, the first anime I ever watched fully was um, was Samurai Champloo. Okay. That one, that one was a good fucking anime. That's a good fucking anime. Um... And then you said your first experience into weebdom? Yeah. It was probably my first con. <laughs> Pro- it was my we first con. Yeah, we went to Bonsai. Because then that's when I saw everybody. I saw I saw the cosplay. I saw a fucking... It was nice. It was good. No, it was... Our fir- my first Bonsai was when I went with, I went with Sean. Yeah, it was me, you, Sean, and uh, Speedy. And KJ, and KJ, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. yeah we went... We went to Bonsai. It was that was a interesting day, for sure. Yeah, I'll, I'll talk about my part of Bonsai after I'm done. Um, but is that it for you, Squish? Yep, that's it. All right, um, Marcus, your second youngest. Oh, okay. Uh, What's so your Marcus? First, I'm curious. So first anime or for, first like completed show? Why not both? So like my first anime was Sailor Moon. Right? Yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Magical Girls, dude. Uh, mm. Let's see, the first one that I completed all the way through, uh, probably Fooly Cooly. Yeah. And even though that was like six episodes, you know, that was still like a roller coaster. And then uh, probably First Con as well. Mm-hmm. Just going around and seeing other people that are, you know, dressed up. And then, like, super into everything, and they know exactly what you're talking about. It was a little bit shocking. 
and then they came out with those yellow paddles, and then, you know... <laughs> we don't talk about that. Yo, so, can I interject real fast? Yeah, I was, go for I was it. watching uh, this YouTuber called like Red Bard do a retrospective on Yowie paddles, and a, a, <laughs> apparently the beginning of the fall was some dude who like hit somebody else with a Yowie paddle with the side of the Yowie paddle so fucking hard that they put that person in a wheelchair for life. Jesus. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> and that was the Holy that shit. was the beginning of the end. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, were were you at this con? No, no. No, he was just looking at uh, looking it up. Yeah, I was watching this retrospective on it uh, on the Abbey paddles. <laughs> Jesus, I'll I'll post the link after the podcast. But the YouTuber is like Red Bard. If uh, anybody else wants to check out the content, <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm curious about this. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Marcus, also, I want to ask um how like how do you. Like, how did you, what, what ways did you go through to just, like, you know, watch anime and whatnot? Like, what ways? Yeah. Uh, like... Oh, dude, the library. Hell what? yeah. The library. Again, what? The library. Oh. Care to share? Like, what do you mean? Like, you just go to the library and you're able to check out, you know, like, DVDs. You do that at a library? Yeah. Have you never yeah. have you never gone to a library? Dude, the only time I went to the library was to go online to like on my Gaia, pro- Gaia profile, MySpace, or fucking download <laughs> hentai. You do- wait, you would download hentai at the library? Continue on with your story, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, but what? <laughs> Continue on with your story. Well no, so like you would uh you'd be able to go check out different uh like if it was like a like a complete disc set, you'd be able to get like one disc at a time type of thing. Yeah. And so a lot of the times it would just be, you know, like a couple episodes of something, almost like a like a PlayStation demo disc, but with just animes. Yeah. Uh, so then jumped into that, and then uh, after that. What's up, Squish? <laughs> okay. Uh, after that, like uh, anything I would see on TV. I remember at the time, like, Pokemon was out, Digimon, Monster Rancher, uh, yeah, then it was all downhill from there, man. <laughs> as, as you can tell, I finished, or, like, I caught up to One Piece. I'm fucking trash. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, um, <laughs> <nice>. <laughs> Alright, Kyle. Um, so, like, the first anime that I ever saw... Uh, was was Dragon Ball Z? It was the Ocean Dub. Uh, I didn't know uh, what that gross. meant, what that meant at the know. time, but like that was back when I was like six years old, and I didn't know what the fuck I was watching. I was just up trying to watch what cartoons. The fuck is Dragon Ball. Um, but then, like as I got younger, and then Toonami showed up. I watched a bunch of those and whatnot. Um, but like I was just into anime because they were like cool cartoons or whatever. I didn't. I didn't differentiate it between like any any other like normal show that I was watching at the time, uh, but like the, so like the first time that like I I had seen anime or manga and was like yeah I'm I'm into this anime manga stuff um, was being at a mall at a bookstore and in their their magazine aisle they had a copy of Shonen Jump. And that happened to be the debut volume of Bleach. Uh, and I read, I, like, they had posted an interview with uh, Taite Kubo uh, in it. And he was like, yeah, I really like Western stuff, like Die Hard and th- all this stuff. And I'm like, oh, that's super cool. This guy seems rad. And then I read <laughs> the first chapter of Bleach. And those fateful words where they, like, post up, like, his name and his stats and then, like, he kicks a dude in his uh, in the face, and it's like special ability. He can see ghosts, and I'm like, I want this. I need this in my life. Uh, so, so I was like, I am all about this. Give me all of it. Um, and so, like, uh, because we lived in like rural Asheville, Kentucky, we didn't like have cable or any kind of like TV stations really, other than the CW. Uh, or it was it was WB at the time, um, yeah. Uh, so like I was still watching like whatever was on WB, and then 
uh, like any time that we went out to an actual city, um, I was reading manga. Uh, and so I ended up reading like all of AI Love You through repeated, repeated trips. And then I moved in and lived with my dad in Utah uh, in, in Layton. So we were right by that Barnes and Noble and I ended up finishing that and picking up a few other manga series and whatnot. Um, and then there was like one fateful summer where I moved, uh, where I, where I went to spend time with my mom in Kentucky and she'd actually moved into the city, had, uh, DSL internet. So it was high speed internet. Uh, and then I discovered piracy and then I watched <laughs> all the fucking anime, dude. Uh, I watched, like, I ended up watching all of Get Backers, um, and then, uh, discovering Data Bio, which was subbing Naruto and Bleach, uh, so I ended up watching... Oh, I remember that. So I, rem I remember, ended up watching, like, all of Bleach, all of Naruto, skipped out on One Piece, and, like, that's, that's kind of what advented that, um, and whatnot. I, I do think... Uh, Get Backers was probably the the series that I watched all the way through first. Um, maybe it was the original Full Metal Alchemist. Um, it's been a while. Um, and then, like, I didn't actually start going to like anime conventions and whatnot. Uh, so, so really, my introduction to uh, fucking debauchery and weebdom was just fucking arguing with people online about anime and going to like <laughs> forums and stuff. Um, and then. Like, I started falling out with it because I was, like, I, I was starting to get genre savvy and catching on to uh, how bullshit Bleach and Naruto were with its filler arcs and all of that dumb bullshit. Um, but one of my friends happened to get stable internet connection as well, and they found this fateful little photo. Uh, if you want to put it up. Uh, on the YouTube video or whatever, uh, but essentially I'll post it in chat. Uh, but essentially, it's just a picture that says, "Before you make a recommendation thread on A, which is the anime board for 4chan, try these." And it was just a bunch of images of a bunch of different anime, and we were like, "All right, cool, we'll watch this." And so, uh, like, I think one of the very first series I ended up watching off of this list was a little known show called Darker Than Black. Uh, and like that that's the first anime that I watched after I had developed taste. So I had no taste, then shit taste, and then Darker Than Black was the the what <laughs> what marked me having taste in anime. I've seen some of these. Yeah. Uh, uh, I've seen some of these. Some of these yeah. some of these are pretty obvious like uh, Ava's on there, Cowboy Bebop, Outlaw Star, um, those are like the, the big popular ones. You've also got Samurai Champloo. Uh, this is what introduced me to Kaiji and Akagi. Um, I've actually watched a good portion of these now. Uh, so. I've seen Mushishi. That one's not bad. Yeah, that you one's also, not bad. You also got Berserk and Trigun and Beck and Fooly Cooly. So yeah, uh, a lot of good stuff. Uh, for as much and is a lot of it's deserved shit that 4chan gets uh boy their anime and video game recommendation threads and uh resources they've put together are pretty fucking solid places to start when you're ready to just dive into the blue yonder of whatever medium you're decided to get yourself in <coughs> yeah i will say this a view a listener or viewer or whatever the fuck you're listening this to if you have a chance mm -hmm. to watch Beck, watch Beck. Watch <laughs> fucking Beck, guys. Watch fuck, read fucking Beck, because it actually finishes. Not that the anime had a, a bad ending by any means, but... It just has a really good soundtrack. Yeah, yeah it has a really good fucking soundtrack. <laughs> if you love English, you'll love Beck for sure. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, have, but you yeah. Seen it? have you seen it, Marcus? Oh, sorry, Kyle. <laughs> no. What, Mogulia Chop Yeah. 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 What about you, Aldo? No, I only know Beck by the artist. <laughs> yeah, if, you, if you have a chance, watch it. I, I highly recommend it. It's like it's like one of those animes that like not a lot of people have seen, I believe. 
Uh, yeah, like if you if you would, if we were having this podcast like ten years ago, there'd probably be a lot more people that had seen Beck. But now, uh, it's just not one of those super popular old ones. Didn't have a lasting legacy, yeah. I guess you could say. All right, um, Mr. Taco. Uh, yeah. So I grew up. I I I didn't grow up. I was born and spent a few years in Mexico. Um, so I remember watching uh, Speed Racer, or as we knew it back then and there, uh, Meteorito, which just means like little meteor. Um, and and obviously Dragon Ball Z, Knights of the Zodiac, uh, Sailor Moon. Captain like Tsukasa. Few... No. Oh. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it was just it was just kind of like those kind of the mostly like shonen type um, stuff. I mean, I probably did watch Captain Tsukasa. You know, I, I don't. I've heard the name, but I don't think I've ever looked at a visual for it. So. Super Capiones. What? Did you ever know what it was called? I don't know. Maybe. Did, did it's a soccer anime. Card Captor Sakura. Uh, I want to say yes, but I'm not sure. Um. But anyway, so I grew up watching those, and I just kind of accepted those as like that. Those were just cartoons. Like, that was just it. Um, so I never really thought they were anime. I. So like the first thing I, like read, knowing it wasn't like just a normal American Western cart- cartoon, was Angelic Layer, which is a shojo manga, about people that have these like cute little fighting robots. Um, is that the one made by the same people who did Car Captors? Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. So yeah, so that's that was like the first thing I saw, and like that was the thing that was like the, the catalyst for me watching anime over over other like cartoons and stuff. Um, mm-hmm. I also found out later that my parents are fans of like a bunch of Japanese stuff, but they didn't know. Like my dad likes no, my mom likes Ultraman. Uh, my dad, my dad knows Ultraman. He doesn't hate it, but he's super indifferent to it. He's like, I showed him a picture of it, and he was like, "Oh, hey, that's Ultraman." And I was like, "You know?" He's like, "I guess." <laughs> uh, and I, like, I told them that like Ultraman is still going on. Like, it's still like a pretty big uh, franchise in Japan. Um, and they're trying to like revive it back here, and they were just like, "Oh, that's cool." Um, but I guess like my mom used to watch that. Uh, she also used to watch yeah, like a couple like, other like magical girl shows from like, like the sixties, um, that were like live action and an anime. Um, I can't remember the name of them. I, I remember because she was asking me about them, and I did some research on those, and she was rewatching them on YouTube, like a couple years ago. Um, <laughs> but uh, but yeah, so like that that's kind of what was like that for me. Um. But also like kind of like Mar- like Marcus Knuckle Bomber. I also was watching a lot of anime through the library. Um, like that's where I saw Ava. After I saw Ava on like the Giant Robot Week at on uh, Toonami, where they only showed like the first three episodes, and I was like, I have to know more. Oh, they had them at the <laughs> library, so I would rent them. And uh, and yeah, like that. That's kind of what was it. Um, I've never had taste. Never will have taste. I like what I like. Fuck you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> <God damn it. laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean, I still unabashedly love uh, Ninja Jesus President uh, Naruto Uzumaki and his son uh, Burrito and Salad. Um, burrito and Salad. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but I will also always appreciate Cowboy Bebop and Samurai Champloo, because those things are fucking dope. Um, and I will continue to watch new seasons of Sword Art Online until I'm old. <laughs> 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 and have gone blind and can't read subs anymore. Um, <laughs> hey, what's this? This sounds like Kirito. <laughs> <laughs> Is that Kirito again? Is that motherfucker still going into the gun world? <laughs> <laughs> He's gonna shoot his Doesn't eye out. <laughs> Guns are bad. <laughs> I remember in World War Three, we tried to fight in virtual cyberspace. <laughs> oh, uh, but yeah, man. So I don't know. I don't know. And then, like, I, th- I think what made it worse for me was uh, was when I found out about uh, my anime list. And then I learned about seasonal anime and, like, tracking anime and all this shit. And then it's just kind of been 
Just a goddamn struggle to be a functioning member of society. <laughs> <laughs> What was your what was your jump to weep them? What was my what? Your jump to weep them. Uh man, I don't It's probably but a got to be Naruto. Like I think Naruto is when I went like that's probably when I realized there was like a community cuz I thought it was mm -hmm. just a I thought it was just a Mexico thing and then when I was here I thought it was like a Mexico and Japan thing with like <laughs> with like some exceptions, right? Like Dragon Ball Z and Sailor Moon were like the exception. Which they yeah. kind of were, um, but it wasn't until like Naruto came out. Uh, I had a friend. His name was uh, was Raj. He, um, I'm still. I don't know that I'm still friends with him. Maybe we follow each other on a bunch of social media, but we haven't spoken a word to each other in like 15 years. <laughs> Fair. But uh, but he and I were in the same class, uh, and one day he brought in like the first volume of of Naruto. Um, and he was, he had finished it like halfway through class instead of like paying attention. And, uh, and I was asking him about it. I was like, yo, what's that? He's like, oh dude, it's about ninjas. I was like, oh, do tell. And he's like, no, that's it. It's about ninjas. And I was like, oh, okay. Uh, so he let me borrow it. And then like, so he and I would, he, so he would read them, let me borrow the volume after he was done. And then we'd like talk about it. And then, like, other kids were were reading it, and then the anime came out, and then, like, a bunch of kids were reading it, and a bunch of kids were watching it, and then we, like, would talk about that stuff. And then, like, a bunch of them started recommending, like, other anime and stuff. And, uh, like, that's, I think that's when it, when I found out, like, you can make friends through anime. <laughs> and, like, there was a community about it, and then, like, you know, Gaia Online was a thing. Um, and then, like... Let's not talk about Gaia Online. Yeah, and then, like, Gaia Online, like... <laughs> Through that, I learned about my anime list, and then through the forums on my anime list, and just like, uh, like it just it just devolved from there. Like to the point, like when I moved to Portland, the first thing I found was like the Portland Weeb Discord, um, and like Portland Weeb Discord. Yeah, so like there's a there's a big <laughs> Discord. I don't know how many people it has in it, um, but like everybody that like goes to the to the conventions there, everybody that's here in the area that like watches anime, like they just they they're in that um so like a couple of days ago like we all went out to like go see a movie together um which was kind of cool uh but like after the movie was over we uh, but like a bunch of us were just talking about like uh makoto shinkai because weathering with you was coming out next week um so like we were all just talking about like makoto shinkai and how like a couple people were like, oh my god, your name's a masterpiece. And then, like, a bunch of other people were like, uh, you're kind of an idiot. <laughs> 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 uh, so, yeah. So, you're so, wrong. I mean, it's, it's, it's it. World War your <laughs> name is a masterpiece. Yeah, it, I mean, it's a good movie. It's beautiful. Uh, but, man, that's, it, it, has, it has issues. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I love it. I bought, like, the super nice special edition for it. Um, but even I would hesitate to call it above, like, great. But yeah, I don't know. It's, I guess I, I guess the full jump into a weed them was probably when I found people who, like, agreed with me and then cemented it when I found people that disagreed with me. Um, <laughs> about, like, anime. <laughs> You're like, yes. Alright, neat. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I guess it's my turn then, huh? Mm-hmm. Oh, okay, so I want to say that probably the first anime I've actually ever watched was uh, Run Warriors, actually. Um, like, it was just, you know, like how it really anime was, just a bunch of dudes just finding some evil dudes and stuff like that. Pretty, pretty straightforward, right? I think it was, like, on Sci-Fi Channel back when I was, like, fuck, like, five or six in, when I was living in Georgia. Um, I remember also like watching bits and pieces of like Dragon Ball when they try to back when they try to bring it over here and they called Goku Zero. <laughs> what? Yeah, have you not heard of like the original Dragon Ball dub? Like Goku they call Zero? they they called Goku Zero. Yeah, Goku was named Zero. No, that makes me want to yeah. throw up a little. <laughs> Let's see. Now, I now I kind of just is. want a Mega Man Zero spinoff. That's like Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> Dragon Ball Zero. 
But, um, yeah, like, that was one of the, like, really old dubs of, dra of Dragon Ball that I remember. Because that's where you find, that's where you, I believe the, um, I think they have a shitty version of the Dragon Ball opening. Where it's like, it uses the Japanese theme, but they don't sing, like, anything with it. Instead of just, but they just, like, keep on saying Dragon Ball. I'll, sh I'll show you, I'll show you sometime later in the future. Um, but, uh, then, you know, uh, Pokemon and stuff came out. I did watch, uh, Gotcha Man, you know, uh, G-Force Battle of Planets with my siblings and whatnot back, and back when I was, like, younger. And it wasn't probably until I moved to Utah and when Pokemon started coming out that I started getting more into, like, I started thinking that they were, a, they that these shows I was watching, these cartoons are drawn in a specific way, you know? That you don't really see a lot of, um, a lot of characters. <laughs> yes, that is the one, Harmony Gold. The same people who did, um, I believe they did the dub for Macross and they made it uh, into Robotech. It's really bad. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's I'm really watching bad. it right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, for the guys who don't know, Squishy put on the Discord the Harmony Gold dub of Dragon Ball. Um, but probably wasn't until, like, Toonami when, um, like, specifically... Probably when um, when they released uh, Gundam Wing and uh, Dragon Ball Z, and they started like showing. They, you started like. Have you guys ever been to, like one of the one of those like um, stores at the mall and stuff? And they have like a like a DVD, or not a DVD, a VHS of like you know of Majin Buu and stuff. And while it was still on the fucking, um, it was still like on the on the Frieza saga. Yeah, at, like a store. Yeah, or whatever. yeah. And you're like, what the fuck happened to Dragon Ball? And stuff like, why are they blonde and all this stuff? Because they haven't showed Super Saiyan yet. Um, and then so so I had probably, so sorry just, sorry just to interject. For it. I You're had fine. like a different thing where um, I was super confused because like in Mexico, uh, I was watching a thing about the history of like Latin America with anime. Um, yeah. So they would just like get the show and just dub it. Like, they wouldn't edit it. They wouldn't really do a whole lot to the show. Because um, it was just cheap, right? They just needed cheap entertainment for kids. Um, yeah, like, um, so, like to, to add with that, like, they did the, they did the Japanese openings just in Spanish. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, so, I watched Dragon Ball Z pretty, like, I don't, I'm not going to say current, because it was, like, in the early 90s. But, like, yeah. I was way more ahead than than it was when I when I was watching it in, he in here because like when I came to the States and I, and I started watching Dragon Ball Z they were starting over from the beginning and I was confused because yeah. I thought they had like I didn't watch the beginning of Dragon Ball Z I had been watching like the Cell Saga when I was a kid um, so I was really confused about why like nobody was going Super Saiyan um, until they caught up to the Cell Saga and I was like, oh my god, I never watched any of this, and I've been behind. <laughs> and, like, I was ahead for years. <laughs> I was like, when is my best boy Trunks going to show up here? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Like, they, fair, fair enough, because um, all the times I went to, um, so my, my family, lived, my family's from Chihuahua, specifically around Juarez and stuff. And, um... I remember going down and vis visiting my tío and my primos, that, and then that's how I got introduced to Saint Seiya and stuff. And I'm like, this is awesome. I want to see more of this. And then when I came back a few years later, it came out as Knights of Zodiac with the uh, opening from Bowling for Soup, their cover of Iran. Oh, gosh. <laughs> <laughs> right. <Yeah. laughs> but it wasn't until like with Tsunami when I was like 13, 14, when Rooney Kenshin showed up. Because that was actually the first time I actually heard, like, Japanese. Like, credit to Rory Kejid for letting me hear a Japanese song. Heart of Sword by TM Revolution is the first Japanese song I ever heard. And I had that stuck in my fucking head for such a long time. Until, um... It's really I started fucking hanging out. good. It's really exactly. fucking good. Exactly. It wasn't until, like, I actually started hanging out with uh, Speedy and Squishy, um... Well, Speedy being one of our old, being me and Squishy's old high school friend and friend to you guys now, um, till I found a website called um, KH Insider, where you could um, download like video game music as well as um, 
anime opening, so I downloaded the Heart of Sword from TI Revolution, and I fucking played that, that on repeat. That was the best site. Exactly. That was the best site. Got like, all my Disgaea music and everything from that, <laughs> and all my Toho music. Like, I went I, I went on Blue Laguna, Galbadi Hotel, KH Insider for all of my fucking video game music and stuff. I don't know if you guys know about any of those other sites, uh, but... Yeah, I know KH Insider and uh, Galavidia Hotel. Yeah, we were, like, really great places to get music for, like, your video games and weeb deeds. Especially, like, like, um, for me, I, I love, like, the first Bleach opening. Like, Asterisk by Orange Range is still, like, probably oh, one of my yeah. favorite anime openings. Da, 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 da. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, it's it's really fucking good. It is. I still, <laughs> I, I hear that, I hear, like, the first bits of that, and I'm just like, oh! <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. It's just the just the just like that like guitar just strings just like DNA. Yeah. Right there, uh, and like, oh it's, shit. It's, Here we go again. It's the same as like the fully cooly intros. Like when well, like as soon as like those little guitar strums hit, I'm just like Oh <laughs> I know, right? Yeah. Like oh my god, like I think I started getting into like the whole weep thing because like when I when when I started watching uh, Toonami on um, when I was like thirteen, fourteen, because uh, at the same time, that's when Adult Swim started to double down more on the anime on the weekdays. Because they used to keep it specifically... Because Adult Swim back in the day used to be, I believe, only on uh, Fridays, uh, Saturdays and Sundays. And um, they showed they showed some anime. They showed Tenshi, Tenshi Muyo, um, Outlaw Star, um, Yu Yu Hakusho, and Trigun and Cowboy Bebop. And this weird, like, Alexander the Great anime. Do you guys remember that? No. <laughs> What? <laughs> there was this weird Alexander the Great anime. I'm going to see if I can show you, if I can find it. Um, but, <laughs> yeah. Um, the, one, the, but, um, one, the one opening that really got to me was the, was the full metal open, the full metal opening, the, the one by uh, Asian Kung Fu Generation. Oh, re uh, not rewrite. Is it rewrite? No. I think it's rewrite. Uh, Asian Kung Fu yeah. Generation, I believe, did ready... Did he go? No, that was that was Larkin. Yeah, Larkin. Okay. Yeah, Larkin. yeah, yeah, yeah. The one by Asian yeah. Kung Fu was rewrite. Uh, yeah. Have you tried the crab? Yeah. <laughs> 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 Has anybody heard that fucking story about Larkin Cell from Game Grumps? No. Where they, where they uh -huh. performed at Boston? Mm -mm. Where they were per they performed at Boston, and I guess they tried like the crabs, and like they don't know a whole lot of English, so like in between songs. uh... They were like, has anybody tried the crab? That's how they said it weird, too. They're like, has anybody tried the crab? Uh, me too. <laughs> and they were just, that's just how they responded. It was like, uh, me too. So, buy a rask if you've tried the crab. Oh, that's it, that's, that's the called, I guess it was called Raid the Conqueror. <laughs> nice. Like, um, but... F go, so further going on, like... Fully Cooly, I just loved, I really liked so much. And then, um, I started actually, <laughs> god damn it, I started actually, like, really, I was really starting to connect with Nauta, because, um, back when I was, around, back when I was, like, a teenager, there was a girl next door who was in high school that had a crush on me, I guess. Um, man, I really fucked up that one. <laughs> I mean, you've, that's not the only one. Yeah, fair. In my limited time as your friend, I have seen. <laughs> fair. But, um, yeah, like, I was not a fan of, like, sour things either and some of that, just because that, you know, I was very impressionable weeb. <laughs> um, then it was probably until, like... Oh my god, it was probably when I was fit, like 14 or 15. No, I was 13 when I first saw my first hentai also. Oh, I was like, like old. Yeah, I was probably like 13 around. Yeah, around your age. Yeah, uh, I, th I, yeah I think I was around that age. When I saw uh, Immoral Sisters. I, I, was, <laughs> I think I was looking for Dragon Ball and I found Dragon Pink. <laughs> I was um, for me it was um, La Blue Girl that's one that was my first one 
Um, but go, getting away from being more of a, of a fucking degenerate, um, it probably wasn't until, like, I started hanging out with actually um, Squishy and them that I started being more of a weep because... Um, you could actually be who you wanted to be. <laughs> yeah, I could actually be a fucking weep. Yeah. <laughs> like, because the friends I hung out with back in the day were, like, just, you know, a bunch of wannabe gangsters and degenerates and stuff like that. I thought, like, you know, me as a person of a darker minority should be acting like a hoodlum, you know? Which, you know, I fucking did. I enjoyed being a hoodlum. And I even when I was hanging out with Squishy and stuff, I was still a fucking hoodlum. But, um... I was more... I was, being, I was more in tune with my weep side. Um... And then when I met Squishy... I remember one specific part when I met up with Squishy. He told me if, to, if he could borrow my MP3 player to, like, to put music on. And I'm like, no. I, I, I love you, Squishy, but I couldn't trust you at the beginning of our friendship. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but then you did let me borrow it later. Yeah, I And did. then I put some good music on it. You did. <laughs> and I thank you for that. Um... Probably, but that was probably the cusp, the cusp of my weed because I was able to buy a lot more weeb shit and stuff. Um, my first manga I probably I bought was um, I think was Air Gear actually. Um, it was I, I came back from West Virginia and I started hanging out with Squishy and them more, and um, we went to a Barnes and Noble and we bought the first volume of Air Gear. I think the first volume of Air Gear is still in my all bunch with all my weeb shit right now as we speak. Um, well, thank you, Squish, by the way, for letting me be more of a fucking weeb. And you just jumped me down this rabbit hole with me and weeped him. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> and then, like, you know, as I met more of my friends, um, you, Aldo, when we started playing uh, uh, Jump Ultimate Stars and in Japanese class. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. That was the ultimate, like, weeb friendship, like, beginning. Yep. <laughs> and um, just us blossoming to, like, you know trying to do our short-lived overdub yeah. series. Dude, that, that all happened, like, right around the time. So I've been, I've been like, single for, like, the last ten years at this point. Um, mm -hmm. And for, like, the first little while, I was trying to, like, not be, like, a weeb, like a nerd, uh, you know, to try to get dates and, like, hook up or whatever. And that didn't work <laughs> out. And then, yeah. like, I think I had, like, this epiphany where I was like, well, fuck it. If I'm going to be alone, being fake... I might as well be alone being real. It's like to myself. And like that yeah. was part of like when I started going like full kind of weeb. Like in general, like in like with people. Um that was like right around the time when like you and I started hanging out a bunch. It's gotta be true to yourself. You gotta be true to yourself, man. You be true to yourself. You always gotta be true. true to yourself. Gotta you gotta be true to yourself. Believe it. <laughs> God damn it. Um, but for, all in all, though, like, it's great that we all had this. We all have, like, you know, this friendship based on, you know, a bunch of Japanese cartoons. And, like, we it's it's always, and especially for me, like, it's always great to, like, bring up old shit and people be like, yeah, I remember that stuff. Like, um, when I talked to Kyle and Marcus about, like, KH uh, Insider and Galbadia Hotel, as well as like you know some really obscure stuff and whatnot. Like even just like old old tsunami or like me bringing up a bunch all the Buddy Mon anime that came out back on Fox Kids because you know they tried to cuss the um, the popularity of Pokemon, Pokemon and whatnot Green. and a bunch of other obscure. Like what's like think about what's the most obscure anime you remember watching as a child growing up? Angelic Lair. <laughs> <laughs> um dual, I would say dual parallel troubles in another universe from uh Tech T V. Yeah. Like back when G four did showed anime. Yeah. Back, be back before G4 had purchased Tech TV. Damn. I think it had to be Vampire Hunter D. Actually, I, th I, I think, think it wasn't... It's not obscure now. 
But I think the one I watched a bunch that actually probably would have been obscure at the time, especially in like the age range I was in and everything, probably actually had to be like dot hack. Like science? Yeah, because like nobody, everybody complained about it being too slow, about like too quiet. It's not cool enough. It wasn't Dragon Ball or Naruto, so like it felt. It felt obscure to me, and it wasn't until like I was older and I was hanging out on like forums and shit like that that I realized it wasn't. But at the time, it fucking felt like it. Yeah. Mark. Marcus. <laughs> I called you Marcus. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't call you Mark. <laughs> Mark. I said Marcus. Uh, oh hi, Mark. Okay. <laughs> oh hi. <laughs> Uh, so for me, it, it'll probably be two of them. Uh, back when I was checking out animes at the library, I got one of those like anime demo discs, right? Uh, one of them was uh, called Someday's Dreamers, about witches. They're like modern day witches, I guess. They would get their powers from a uh, from a ring. Uh, and then the other one is uh, Brigadoon. That one was about a little warrior girl with her with their robot and they would fight crime and stuff but like whenever I ask anybody if they've seen any of those no one no one responds back with like yeah I know what that is <laughs> except for Stormy I think for me um, around the time like where anime started to be trying to aim for more kid friendly I think was um, Shinzo which was a, um, it was on Fox Family, back when Fox Family was a thing. And, um, Moncoli Nights, which was a body, a, an, it was an Isekai Buddymon, I believe. <laughs> Isekai Buddymon? Buddymon? Yeah, Isekai Buddymon, yeah. And also Flint the, Dime, the Time Detective. With also Escafloni being there, too, for a little while. And dinosaurs. <laughs> Dinosaur. <laughs> <laughs> and probably back when I back when anime used to be on Encore. I don't know. Is anime still on Encore? Was Encore still anymore. a thing? Maybe. Um, I used to remember like Bubblegum Crisis being on, and I'm like, oh fuck yeah, Bubblegum Crisis. I but also I love Bubblegum. <laughs> <laughs> I actually still need to watch that. I haven't. Yeah, like you, you, you're a fan of like, really of like old school anime, right? Yes. <laughs> like it, it has a certain charm to it for real, for the for real yeah. though. Um, well, yeah. Let's get off the topic of the, of weeddom and stuff, and let's get back on the topic of weeddom by talking about fighting games. <laughs> fighting games. Some people in the FGC that would have words with you about that. I don't know because you know, people who are part of the FGG love them weeb games, especially Guilty here. That being said, um, so um, they announced so Arc System, Arxis, fuck, is it Arxis? Yeah. Yeah, it's Arxis. Arc System, yeah. Um, they announced like a new fighting game coming out for like the Switch, PC, and PS4 and whatnot. Not a fighting game, actually. More so like a weird platform called Code Shifter. Like, I'm pretty sure you guys saw the trailer for it. Um, the premise is, I guess, that... Um, I don't know what the premise is fully, but... There are 30 characters from from games that Arxis, Arxis has. Like, Soul Bad Guy. You got Ragnar the Blood Edge. You got Bammy and Jammy from fucking <laughs> Double Dragon. I thought it was like 100 Nebobo. characters. There's 30 playable characters with 70 assists. Oh. Oh, man, they got River City people in there, too? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I didn't see this. They got a Bobo. Until you mentioned what's, it just now. What's the name of this game? Code Shifters. Code Shifter. It's, it's in like, the Topics and News channel. <laughs> it it looks like... Here's the thing, though. Like Other than the 8-bit stuff, it looks like, so like strange to me. Because it's, like, it's a weird like American-looking indie... like. Not indie platform, more like the one of the obscure games you'll see like for like five like for two, three, five bucks on like the eShop or whatever. 
But there's just the sprite work though. Looks so like it looks so cool, you know. Uh, I mean, like it's a neat idea. Uh, other than the fact that they've already revealed the entire roster of the the game, uh, and it doesn't look that great. Uh, it also has like a weird mismatch because like all of these players and assists are eight bit. But like when you're looking at the game itself, it's not uh, like the some of the background areas seem to be eight bitish, but then some of the enemies do not appear to look that way. Like they look like three D assets that have been dropped in. Like yeah, looking at the screenshot right now, and it, like everything else seems to be like a like a it's a mismatch of art style, and it doesn't look good. Yeah. But the th- the thing is though that I, that gets me most is like the is that four player smash that Smash Brothers esque mode you know I think that seems more like the real the, the, the colorful big, fighters the thing out of all of it yeah like the um, what what kind of what kind of what kind of genre would this would you call it like a Smash Brothers esque fighting game it's it's technically called a platform fighter platform fighter yeah, yeah like I I would like for Arxis to do kind of a um kind of a Smash Brothers thing, but I'm more with, you know, their fighting engine. Yeah, this looks cute, but it kind of feels like, uh, kind of like the Shovel Knight fighting game. Where, like, they made... A, yeah, Showdown? Yeah, where, like, they made a platforming engine, and then we're like, hey, we can make this into a fighting game engine. Yeah. Yeah, it kind of has that... It kind of feels a little Shovel Knight-ish, now that I'm, like, thinking about it. Which is what I think you were trying to get at, about how it looks kind of indie, but not... Yeah, yeah. Like it, it looks like. Like I said, I, I do enjoy the sprite work. Like, like the sprites for all the all the characters that you could play as and stuff. Yeah, the sprites remind me of like super old River City Ransom. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, sprite, like philosophy, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Design philosophy. I don't know. And then you see like you see them do their you know their signature moves and stuff, and that looks pretty. Looks pretty clean, yeah. you know. I kind of, I kind of don't like the art style for everything else. Like the sprites look cool, and the sprite backgrounds on like the fighting game look cool, but I kind of have to well, like, every- agree with Kyle, where like the rest of the stuff kind of looks very stock. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> like, I'll, I'll probably, I'll probably get this game just because I want, I just specifically want like that multiplayer, you know. Yeah, that multiplayer looks fun. Um, yeah, I'm a I'm a big fan of sprite art, so. Because so this looks this. like the only thing. This looks like the only time we'll ever get like Blaze Blue Cross uh, Guilty Gear, for a while. <laughs> it's got the two girls from River City Girls. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. As one As character, a... uh, it also has uh, the main characters from River City Ransom as two separate characters. Uh, and then the same thing for what looks like is probably Double Dragon again. Yeah, yeah Batman and Jabby. Yeah, uh, which is a little bit ridiculous considering this is already an eight-bit sprite game. Like, what the fuck? You gotta, you gotta pad sh- that roster, dude. <laughs> you gotta yep. make that roster look big. Why not? They have a lot of guilty. They have a lot of uh, Blaze Blue characters, though. Yeah, they yeah. do. Just by one more. Wait. No, they have just about the same. Looks like they have the same amount of. We've got seven like, Blaze, Blaze Blue and seven Guilty Gear. Guilty Gear. Man, I yeah. sure wish I could read Japanese on this website. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, it looks honest. Other than like you know the um, the main game or whatever, the fight, the little mini game, the multiplayer fighter looks pretty dope. And I'm, I'm kind of really interested in regards to that. What about you guys? Uh, eh. <laughs> it's like a fun, like, party game, I guess. I'm gonna wait for it to be on a sale. I'm or right. I could, probably... Or I can get it for free with Prime. Well, it's gonna be on the like Switch, that. right? Yeah. Yeah, so that'd be fun, like, uh, with the multiplayer, if everyone had a Switch. Nice handheld to bring with you. Um, yeah. I'm probably never gonna play it. I don't care. But you know what's um what's not so hot? 
Well, I guess it really depends on how you look at it. Is, you know, fixing the problem from one of your favorite games, right? Yeah. You remember how I said at the beginning sure. of the podcast that we peaked with that segue? Yeah. <laughs> we're, we're officially downhill. We're Evidence. downhill citizens. <laughs> <laughs> these 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 segues will come more naturally as as we do the podcast. No, they've never been saying that, that for six podcasts. Point, but no. And... <laughs> anyways, anyways, so I want to say probably like. Three four days ago, as of this recording, um, a user created a mod for Street Fighter Five to fix up their netcode to make more of a make it more similar to rollback. Because Street, Street Fighter Five does have a rollback netcode, but it's not really the best. They, um, they outsourced it. Yeah. Apparently, they outsourced everything in, in Street Fighter Five. <laughs> or yeah. oh yeah. So. Um, for the most part, it caused it caused kind of an uproar in regards to the just the Street Fighter community, um, which it turns a plus for those who are working on um, who play Street Fighter, and it's also the modder who did the who did the the fix um, is also working on ones who haven't got the um, arcade edition who are still playing uh, vanilla. Uh, that's on PC, by the way. Um, it's a big hassle for people who play on PS4, like myself, and. Um, I don't know who else owns Street Fighter Five here. Uh, I own it on PC, so uh, I have it on PS4. So Kyle's the only one that gets the benefit of this. Yeah, <laughs> and I'm I'm probably never going to use it because I don't play online. Are you a Street Fighter player, Kyle? Like I like Street Fighter, um, but I feel like for a good portion of it, uh, it is really kind of a little too technical. And while this isn't a problem that's limited specifically to Street Fighter, uh, I think fighting games just do a super awful shitty job of teaching people how to play their games. Um, and with something that's very technical with um, like Street Fighter, they, that's e it's even worse. Yeah. And... Due, due to the uproar of just overall the this overall situation regards to the netcode, um, it got worse for people who are playing PS4 versus PC players. It got worse for the PS4 players just because uh, it just makes things oh so much bad. And funnily enough, um, Yoshinori Ono, the guy behind Street Fighter V, is looking to look at the situation in regards to it. And seeing what happens because honestly, this gives this this does give a much better advantage to the PC players compared to the PS4 players. How they get better matches and whatnot. Um, I don't know if do I don't know if a lot of like pro gamers, like professional Street Fighter players, play um, play it on the PS on the PS4 or the PC because I know that um, at like fighting game tournaments like Evo and stuff, they play on PS4, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I think a lot of them do, but I think it's just because I think a lot of them are sponsored. So I think a, I, I don't know. I never you never really see a lot of their actual setups. You typically see a lot of their whatever fight sticks. Yeah, it's, using. it's usually yeah. on PS4 though, because I know Sony has sponsored them in the past, and I know uh, at least among the FGC, it's from what I understand, it's it's widely perceived that. The Xbox pad is pat is trash because that D-pad is a pancake on ice. I mean, it's also a trash <laughs> layout. Yeah. <laughs> but um, like, how do how do you guys how do you guys feel about this overall? Like, I know you guys some of you guys don't really care about about Street Fighter or whatnot, but like, how do you guys really feel about just this whole situation? If it did if it affect like say a game that you guys. We're into like, for example, like. Tech I mean, I'm I'm always gonna side with like, not, or not side. I'm always gonna be the opinion that like, if a fan has to fix your game for you, you're with the resources that you have as a as a major publisher. Like, come the fuck on, dude. Um, granted, I also I also work in like the development field, 
So I understand a lot of like the going ons that happen in the background when it comes to like these major corporations and development time and uh, like resources and like uh, what 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 we call like prioritization of issues. So like I have like a like a like a little insight onto that stuff, but like it's still like a like a what the hell are you doing type thing. Like some some yeah. dude fixed that, and it's not even like a major overhaul issue, right? Like it's a dude who did this in like two days, presumably like in their spare time. Um, and it's like it's like what what are you doing, Capcom? And it, it kind of hurts specifically because Capcom is kind of going through like a renaissance where they're doing really good stuff with like all their other franchises. Um, yeah. So to see Street Fighter kind of drop the ball, it, it just yeah. kind of hurts. Street Fighter Five has well, been a very very big ball drop. I yeah, think. like like they spent so much development time, effort, and like marketing to do that really stupid uh, like in-game advertising. Where like Ryu would would fight with like branded gloves or whatever. Mm-hmm. Like, was that really so necessary? <laughs> well, it's like um, it's it's like a uh, freaking just the the rush that Cap, Cap Capcom did with regards to initially with Street Fighter to begin with. Because how long did it take for them to get to bring in the story mode and whatnot in regards to the when Street when Vanilla Street Fighter came out, uh, Vanilla Street Fighter Five. Because it was back in, I want to say, 2016 when they released Street Fighter V originally. And then um, it was probably what, I want to say, 2018. Was it 2018 when they released Arcade Edition? Yeah, I think, yeah. I think no, it was 2018. No, it was 20, uh, yeah, 2018 for Arcade, yeah. And that had, had the first two seasons in it. Yeah, and I don't know, I initially thought that after the release of Arcade Edition, Street Fighter would be doing really well, but apparently not. Like, Capcom has... Like... While I do agree with Aldo having Capcom being in, like, uh, such a renaissance, like, we we got... We got, like, you know, really good Resident Evil games. They did, they did well with Resident Evil 7, and the remakes of... R, the remake of RE2 is fucking amazing, and RE3 I'm really looking forward to, even though I'm not a guy who's into horror games. Um... Delve May Cry Five, from what I heard, is really great, and you know, I'm I love Monster Hunter, and it's really it's for, for me as a Monster Hunter player who played Monster Hunter back on the when I started playing it on like the game on um, the the 3DS and stuff. Um, I would not I didn't think that you know Monster Hunter would ever surpass Street Fighter as you know one of Capcom's like better bigger games and stuff, you know. And it seems like really the whole fighting area in regards to Capcom after after the release of Street Fighter V has not been doing so hot um, just because that the other like the other game that Capcom released after Street Fighter V that was a fighting game was Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite and that had its problems with its own it had apparently a really great net code but it had a lot of problems to, it's weird because it had a lot of like you know other problems that it had other than the net code and like as a person who who likes fighting games and stuff um, I'm pretty sure and obviously you guys do too um, until Capcom finds a way to get it out of the park somehow I feel like there's going to be a decline in Capcom fighters for a while and I don't know do you guys have any rebuttal or anything like that towards what I said? Um, I think I think we might see a decline in how many they come out just period. I mean, we're no longer in the golden age of like Capcom fighting games like we were fifteen, twenty years ago. Um yeah. I mean we're at the point where maybe we see what, two Capcom fighting games? I mean even right now how many active Capcom fighting games are there? It's just Street Fighter Five. Right, and the and just the short lived Mar- M V C I. Um yeah. So I don't know. I, I I think I think part of the problem here too is it's nobody nobody in gaming knows how to do a proper boycott. Um, <laughs> so like when Street Fighter comes out with like a lackluster single player thing, um, and it comes out with with a terrible netcode, everybody's still buying and playing the game, and so they're still buying the DLC. Like they're still doing a lot. There's still tournaments happening. 
So like what real motivation does Capcom have as, a, as an industry to, or as a business to be like, yeah, let's overhaul this thing. When like what they see is like, you know what they want is more costumes. So like, yeah, like, um, it's, they're, they're looking at it and they're like, we got bigger things to worry about. Like, you know, uh, Resident Evil, Monster Hunter. Well, well no, you not, know, not, be, not even uh, that, be, not even that, because like, like, this is on the assumption that like, the Street Fighter department is separate. Like, their Street Fighter department is looking at this thing and being like, I right, yeah, we could fix this netcode, but we also have, like, two more characters we have to work on. Yeah. And it seems like, this seems like it's a real, it's a real kick in the pants, because to get, to get the attention of Ono, in regards to just the overall... Just the overall situation, because there's there's a patch coming out on the 15th for Street Fighter Five, if I remember right, and especially with them trying to get everything prepped up for um, for um, not arcade edition for Championship Edition. Yeah, yeah, Championship that's one coming out on See, February. The the thing I think that's going on is just Ono does not care anymore. That's not fair to say. I don't, yeah, it's, um, I, it's I, not I, Ono that doesn't care. It's Capcom that it, doesn't it, care. Yeah. Okay. Let me let me rephrase that yes Cap Capcom doesn't give a fuck about about their about their fighting games I think at least their fighting games um, well like I, I feel like um, it's like while the Street Fighter while like, Capcom has its like own departments in regards to like what what games they're working on I feel like they're not going to really pay any sort of funding towards the um, towards uh, just the overall fighting game like Street Fighter and whatnot. To really like pay no mind, you know, they got other things to really, you know, do. Especially, especially if like their fighting games are not, are not doing so well, but all their other games are. I feel like they're gonna look forward, like go to their other games that are doing well than the ones that are doing like mediocre, you know? Because like we we can look at we can look at like we can look at Mega Man for example, right? Um, as a Mega Man fan, I have my own hit problems. I have like I love I love Mega Man and stuff, but. Capcom didn't really, for a long time until somebody, until they made Eleven to either to you know get off the successes. I remember what somebody told me. I think it was Aldo, just to see like, oh, you guys like Mighty Number no. Nine that bomb. Well, here's Mega Man Eleven, so you guys come back to us. Um, but they, for the longest time, they they knew that they were gonna be that you know Mega Man doesn't sell as well, you know, like. That's probably one of the reasons why I feel like Legend Street was shelled because that, even though that, you know, a lot of people would clamor for it, it would not sell well in front of like you know the overall market, and that's why I say why Monster Hunter is such like it's surprisingly such a success, a little bit earlier, and um, because I honestly I don't want like, I don't think that um, with Street Fighter with Street Fighter Five like Jun Way is not gonna affect like. It's not going to make the overall fighting game thing go away because Street Fighter Four was the one that re that rekindled the uh, interest in fighting games, and um, now it feels like I want to say Tekken and Arxis with their games coming out, they are they could like easily just take over Street Fighter spot in regards to being, you know, the fighting game to go, get to because like I love Street Fighter, I love playing Street Fighter, but. If I had to play a choice between Street Fighter Five and Tekken right now, I would probably play Tekken Seven, like just because I, uh, you know, I enjoy, I enjoy Tekken Seven a little bit more, you know. And it has like decent online. <laughs> has decent online also. Like I, 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 I jumped, I jumped on some, I jumped on some, I jumped on some online matches and stuff. It, there was some little bit of lag, but I went probably um, on a set, on a set of ten with um, a guy who was. Playing Steve Fox and I was obviously lucky, Chloe, and yeah, we we had some good we had some good rounds. My dude, I I love Smash to like death. Like, I sat in a line I think with you for like two hours to play like a round of yeah like Spy? to play like a round yeah. of Smash. <laughs> and I, we did this like during a convention, didn't we? Like it was during like a con weekend. Yeah, no. I, yeah, I, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Was at um, Anime Salt Lake. Yeah, yeah, it like yeah, it was it was stupid. Like that's how much I love Smash. It's like I fucking ignored a convention I was at to go play Smash, to go wait in a lane for like two hours to play Smash. Um, exactly. But my gosh, man, if if I'm gonna sit down and play a fighting game online, it's not gonna be Smash. It's not gonna be Street Fighter. It's oh, yeah, gonna be Tekken. 
Tekken's online like netcode is good. But yeah, uh, yeah, I don't know. It's it's, it's I want to say it's good. I'd say it's decent because it's it's still it's still delayed it's still delayed netcode. Yeah, but I mean by and by like comparison, I guess like it's good. Com yeah, by comparison, it's good. Yeah, I mean, I mean, and, I mean and, and if you look, oh, dang it, I already put away all my fighting games. I had like a stack of the fighting games that I'm playing. Like, I mean, if I was to compare, <laughs> like, Tekken's netcode to, like, a bunch of the other fighting games I'm playing, I think it probably has some of the better netcode out of most of the fighting games I have. Um, and yeah. that's mostly why I decide to, if I'm going to play something online, that's probably going to be that, because of that reason. Right. Marcus, what's your take on it? You play a lot of online on Tekken, right? Uh, every now and then I play some online stuff, but like, the only thing I've noticed like with Tekken online is uh, whoever has like the worst connection, it tries to meet both the connections in the middle. But you, just like with every other, you know, other online game, you will get lag, and like let's just say your internet's doing crappy, uh, the other person will see your character lag while their internet's just keeping them up. But uh, I don't know. I haven't had I haven't had any issues on it, and I don't play much of Street Fighter. Kyle, um, so I was actually watching a video uh, with Wooly versus and Pat uh, from the Super Best Friends, and they had a big long discussion about uh, it was it was a video for. Uh, Fight of Animals, which is like a, a super indie fighting game where you just play as animals and you fight. It's, it's the same guy that did Fight um, of Gods. Yeah, uh, Fight of Gods. Yeah, right? yeah. Um, and that uses rollback netcode from from GGPO, uh, and it works fantastically. Uh, in fact, everything that I've heard is that uh, everyone should just use GGPO netcode and rollback netcode, um, and the the constant. Uh, thing that we've heard from Japanese developers on why they don't use it is because it's it's just a lot of excuses like uh, we we don't have the resources to implement it and, and uh, it's too hard to implement in our current existing system but like if the fucking guy who <laughs> made fucking fight of uh, animals some fucking indie joke meme game can do it. There's there's no fucking excuse. It's it's just Japanese developers making excuses, um, or I shouldn't say developers. It's Japanese producers uh, making excuses about wanting to change things or having to learn new technology. Um, it's it's the reason that Japan Japan kind of fell behind in game development during the 360 PS3 period because they kept just trying to make the same fucking shit and then. Uh, America leveled up and started making these huge games, and Japan just couldn't keep up. Also, I think they had like a, an economic downtime. During that I, and I think it's also a thing. I, I, I don't know. Maybe if I, I don't know if I missed it. Um, you said it and I missed it. But it's also a thing where like it feels like Japan is very not receptive to using products outside from Japan. Um, yeah. Uh, I think it's def yeah. that's definitely a big part. Yeah, of so it's it, not it just seems... that it's a third party thing; it's a, it's specifically like an American third party. It's, it's a foreign yeah. thing. Yeah. So they're just like, mm, no, no. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, and I think, uh, and like I said it earlier, but I think, uh, like I think, video games in general do like a really shitty job of teaching people how to play. A lot of their tutorials are just, oh, here's how you use the controller, and not here's some stuff that, in details that you'll need to know about playing the game. Uh, and I think fighting games in particular are just the fucking absolute worst um, at this. Like, uh, if you were brand new to fighting games, you're like, I, I would like to play. I like seeing these, these, these good people do the good punch kicks, and I want to learn how to do that. Uh, all a game fucking gives you um, is is fucking uh, here's here's your character's move list. Good luck. Maybe you might be lucky to get frame data, uh, or you'll get you'll get like com like combo trials uh, that are for very impractical combos or not optimized combos, uh, and uh, become super outdated. 
I think I think my favorite like fighting game tutorials are the ones where they're like, okay, learn learn this, learn like this basic combo. You're like, okay, punch, punch, kick. They're like, okay, cool. Now learn how to do like a super. You're like, okay, cool. I do this thing twice. And then they're like, okay, cool. Now do a ten punch combo, cancel into your super, and then cancel out of that into like another combo. <laughs> and you're just like, then, the, then dream cancel into your V trigger skill seven. Yeah, and, and then, then gold burst. <laughs> And what? Just, yeah, exactly. You're just like, I'm sorry, did I like miss a class or something? What the hell? I don't know, like, cause I'm like, I'm I'm very indifferent in regards to just the uh, just the overall fighting games and whatnot in regards to tutorials because um I f I I get it like I get it in regards to what you mentioned before, Ken, before and Kyle and um. It, 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 like there's some games like there's some training there's training modes that tell you like do this do that and stuff but and I wish that you know especially with say like um, Marvel with Marvel for Capcom we're gonna at least show you like the exact moment to hit somebody like to do a, a proper cancel you know or to do like um, in Marvel's Capcom 3s instead to do a proper pop off for when you're able to um, do the inputs and whatnot but I feel like at the same time. If there was more, maybe, maybe it's just me, and I, I could be wrong just saying this, but if there was a more more of an introduction in regards to, um, or much proper training mode, I feel like it kind of loses the imagination in regards to kind of doing your own, set, doing your own, like, just playing your own way and whatnot, you know? Like, I, doing your I own would have to or setting disagree up entirely, yeah, because disagree you can't, heavily. It's, it's like jazz. Like, sure, like, having sheet music takes away from the spirit of jazz, which is, like, improvisation and shit. But you also have to learn, like, the fundamentals of music and learning how to use your instrument before yeah, you can like, play jazz. And like if you you're... can't be... You can't be creative or, like, build your own combo if you don't understand how any of that shit fucking works. Like, yeah. going into Street Fighter Four and doing a combo, like, any time I would pass those combos, I would just be like, okay... Why did this work on attempt eight, but not attempts one through seven? What changed? What did I do differently? And because I don't have that understanding, anything that I'm doing in those trials doesn't mean shit. Yeah, but also like there was a um, there's a video I saw. I saw. I don't. I was. If I could find, it, I'll, I'll put a link to the Discord. Um, it's in regards to like just the kind of like three types of fighting game players. I don't know if you guys ever saw that one. Um, it's like um, the um, how people, the kind of games people play, like people who play, who just could easily put the button commands, people who like just keep pressure on, and people who know, um, people who know mentally how to do all the stuff and to just kind of overthink your opponent and whatnot. Um, I think I know what video you're talking about. I think I've seen yeah. that as well. Did you just see it on YouTube? Yeah. yeah. Mm hmm um, I feel like people need to, I, I feel, I feel like people just need to take their time learning, you know, and just like, people don't need to be, people don't need their hands to be held in regards to these kind of games and whatnot. Like, you get in, you don't, you don't, you play with, you know, people. It's like when we play fighting games growing up and stuff, we just like push a bunch, random bunch of buttons and stuff like that. And then, um... If when we're by ourselves, we go take it to we go take it to labs and just try to practice, you know, to be able to fire. Well, him yeah, but just so you can show your friend or something, I'm not, like, you know. Like yeah, you do but that. we're not saying like a tutorial needs to show you like every combo or every like good combo in a game. We're saying a tutorial should be able to teach you the system, and a lot of games don't have a lot of fighting games don't have a decent tutorial to explain the system that you're playing. Yeah, like, like. That's all good and all, but like the the reason that I think fighting games are in decline is that, um, like I would love to to get really hardcore into like Killer Instinct or Guilty Gear or any fighting game, but the problem is, uh, is that to even get competent at fighting games, I have to get put a good twenty to thirty hours in. Why would I do that when I can just play, uh, you know? an hour of Dark Souls and be competent at it. Like, the 
to even be able to competently understand what you're doing in a fighting game takes so much more goddamn time it takes than a lot it of, should take it, well like 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 with like with every like with everything that like with everything it takes time but, but like, the, like, okay it's, so, it's, it's, the same, it's the same way if it's the same it's the same way of like same of playing a sport and stuff of like that it takes time to yeah, get good but the, but the thing with like fighting games is like especially like stuff like street fighter or anything is that you can't do that in game like the part of the, the the time that it requires isn't necessarily like just playing the game, because I can sit down with a character and in Tekken and in maybe an hour I've understood a, like basics of it, but nothing in the game tells me, hey, this character is really set up to do parries. This character is really set up for these types of combos. This character has like these weird things. I have to go outside of the game and watch videos, read articles, look up other like other streamers and shit like that like just the amount of footwork to understand that outside of the game like just doesn't work um as yeah, opposed like, to something like dark souls where the game teaches you how the systems work and like does the thing like yeah but keep in mind in dark in, in a game like dark souls stuff that you're playing with like one specific character like each character has their own differences and stuff like that yeah, you know? you're playing with a multitude of characters and you you're also looking at your own matches with characters. Like, see, will my character do well against these characters? And will my or will my character do bad against this character and stuff like but, that? You but know? that's the thing that like, fighting games don't even tell you. Like, they don't explain to you what type of characters are set up to be what. Like, you have a lot of characters that are zoning characters. You have characters that are defensive, charge characters. So, like, when you pick up and start playing, like somebody, like nothing in the game is ever like, hey, you have a character that's a charge character. You'll do really well in these matchups if you can master these specific like strategies and things like that. Yeah, but like it, it also really depends specifically on like each on each and every fighting game and stuff like that. Uh, that's, and that's what we're saying is that most fighting games are really terrible. Like Skullgirls has an amazing tutorial that teaches you the the basics of of its engine, and not even the basics. Yeah. Like it teaches you a lot of like advanced stuff in it too. Uh, Mortal Kombat as as kind of in my opinion, as kind of shit as, as a fighting game it is, also does a really good job at, like, giving you a peek under the hood of, of like, what stuff is happening when you're playing the game. What I've been liking about fighting games lately, uh, one thing to come about it, um, they're actually starting to show a lot of frame data also. Um, what, what I'm saying is that, like, when you go to, like, when you go to training mode and stuff like that, They'll show you, oh, this move is a plus three on block, so that means that you can move if during that. It shows you how negative or how positive you are during during those frames. I am liking that, and like Tekken is impl implementing their, they're going to implement hitboxes also here pretty soon, unless they've already done that. Uh, it's probably going to be locked behind DLC, just like the frame data. No, it's 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 a free DLC, I thought. No, you have to pay for no, it. The, the, yeah. yeah, the frame data, you have to pay for it. Oh, okay. uh, the updates with like the punishment training and stuff, that was all included on the update. If you have the newest, uh, newest expansion, or not expansion, uh, season pass. Yeah. Like, and, and, so I'm not saying that like fighting games need to be easy or that, or that they don't, or that you shouldn't put time into them because anything that you want to be good at is going to require time. If you want to be competitive with fighting games, <clears throat> Yeah, that's going to require time. But what I'm saying is the wall to even decide you're going to get competitive is a lot higher in fighting games than it is in any other game genre. Yeah. And, like, we've been seeing a trend of fighting games trying to become more accessible by doing stuff like, uh, like simple modes and, like, what... Persona 4 and Blaze Blue Cross Tag Battle, and I am not for those. I no. do not like auto combo stuff that like that is the wrong direction like if there was one implementation that i would put into a fighting game to help reduce that wall it would literally uh just be the ability to create your own to like lay out the the frame data like when you select a move it's like to basically build your own combo you could go in and you could be like all right uh I, I want my opening move to be medium punch. Uh, and then uh, you, you put that into a list, and then the game would automatically filter, okay, here's everything that you could follow after a medium punch, and then 
Once you select a second move, it'll tell you, okay, this is kind of the window that you have to transition from this move to this move. Yeah. Uh, it basically would lay frame data out in a visual format that is far easier to digest. Um, and, like, that's it. Yeah. That's, like, that, that one change would solve a lot of problems. So, and I, so I was talking to, like, to, to Uncle Bomber about Leroy, because I started picking up Leroy um, in Tekken 7. And... I can't understand half of his toolkit because he has like a move that puts him into like this like standing defensive posture, and he has like several options to like attack, attack and get out of it. I don't know what the purpose of any of those are. Like I don't know if which which of those like chain into a combo or like which ones do these. Even though like the information has mostly been given to me, and they've given me like some attacks and they've given me some stances and they've given me some attacks that come out of what stances. But I don't know how much of that shit connects to each other. And I don't know the ideal time or opportunity to be using those attacks. And, like, I have to go watch some YouTuber talk to me about, like, Leroy's kit outside of Tekken. Because Tekken doesn't provide me that information. Um, and, like, also just the amount of work that you have to do to set up a, a training dummy... Uh, to help you out with understanding like block streams and things like that. There is a lot of like fundamental tools that pro players have have come up with uh, like methods to to like learn these. Um, and like like fighting games have been around and people have been competitive at fighting games for like thirty some odd years. <laughs> but our training mode is has not our training options in actual video games that you play have not fucking changed like the, at all. The thing that's changed is how many people are online to explain this stuff for you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, I, I'm, I don't know. I'm, I'm still. I'm just. I'm still. I'm still kind of. It just really, really fifty-fifty on it and stuff. Yeah, like that, I mean, you know? I, 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 I hear what you're saying. That like, yeah, you have to put time into it. Like, your your hands not going to be held or whatever. But what I'm saying is, they're not even, they're barely trying to hold your hand. They uh, essentially like Fighting. like most games will at least hand you a book and be like, hey, um, here's some here's some things to consider. Uh, now go out and do your own thing. Fighting games literally uh, have you in a plane. Uh, 750 feet above the ocean, or no, like like three miles above the ocean, and then they throw you out and go, oh, yeah, better figure it out. Learn to swim. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's that, and that just that really depends on how if you want to like just already jump in on um if you want to jump in online and not actually try to like you know do practice or something. You know? No, because even if you Cause... jump into practice, it's basically the same thing. It's just uh, here's a move list. Okay, figure it out. We're not. And and yeah. uh, and, and gives, even for gives, people like me who are like a little illiterate, like frame data is cool. I don't know what half of it means, and they just give me a screen of frame data, and I'm like, all right, cool. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, like it just. Oh, fuck, what was I gonna say? <laughs> Shit, lost my train of thought. Um, it really just like for me, it just seems like okay. Here's here's a list of here's a list of combos and stuff like that you know and. Even if you even if you are able to do even if you were able to do that stuff, you still won't be able to have like to be able to do said combos or anything in this, in that situation. You know, like all the stuff all the stuff that you that you were handed to and learned, you could probably use some of it, but you probably won't be able to use all of it. Right, but what I'm saying is they give me a li they they give me a list of combos like Tekken does like that does that right? A Street Fighter does that where yeah. they, they teach you a combo. They're like here, do medium punch, do this, and like. Yeah, so it's up to me to learn the timing on that stuff. What they don't teach you is why do those combos work? How can you jazz out of those styles, out of, out of those combos? What, what about those, those combos is, like, effective? And, like, why is that the recommended combo that you should learn? Like, they don't teach you. It's like if I just handed you, like, a, like some sheet music and it was like, here, play this song. You know how to play the... You know how to press some keys on the piano, learn how to play this song. And it's like, oh, okay, but, like... Why does this work? Like, why does this sound work when I flow into this sound? Like, I'm not teaching you any of that. Like, I don't, I don't, I feel like an asking, asking the why is not part of, like, as part of why, like, how, the reason to know these, the games, I, you know? I, I, I Just, mean, that's why you hit a wall, though. Because you don't know why stuff works or doesn't work. 
Like, you should be asking a why. <laughs> I don't know, like, like I said, it's, I'm just, like I said, I'm, I'm just still 50-50 on it. Like, if you, if you, if you plateau and stuff, that's just, you know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, the... so, so I plateau in a fighting game, why should I continue? Why, why should I buy the next game yeah. after that? Yeah. Why why should I buy wanna, any other wanna, fighting game after that if I'm just going to keep plateauing? Do you want to continue do you want to continue being the basement hero or do you want to try to expand your wings? Why why should why should I even strive for that? Why should I play fighting games? <laughs> I can do the exact same thing playing Devil May Cry and Devil May Cry Cuz you enjoy it cuz you cuz you enjoy it. I don't enjoy plateauing, Jeff. <laughs> I don't enjoy being handed a, a sampler platter and then just going um uh, fuck you. Dude, MMOs are infinitely more uh, complicated than, than fighting games, and I know what I'm doing in an MMO. Right? Like, <laughs> that, that's fair, but, like, you know, you're, you're not. Like, that's, uh, that's, might, that might, is a perfectly might, fine might, and reasonable I argument, might, but I. I might go, I might go, I might go to, I might go freaking. I might go to. I might be like playing. I play long, Final Fantasy longer than you have, but I'm not gonna do a fucking. I'm not gonna go to like fucking Bahamut Ultimate and try that. And stuff, right, but know? I mean, I'm also like, not gonna. And like, like, like with, like with, like with everything. Like I said, yeah, it takes but I'm also time not gonna jump into Street like, Fighter and start like, going platinum in my first online match. Like, yeah, like, sure, they have fences yeah, but, of like your skill level, but like at least with Final Fantasy, like I there's there's. You, you level up into the, into those like restrictions, but there's a lot of tools in Final Fantasy to explain why my combos work and what they don't work and what they do. So if my rotation isn't working, I can look in the game, and the game will tell me what stuff flows into each other and, and works and does what it does. Like Final Fantasy tells me right. that games aren't, that certain attacks aren't on like a global cooldown. Some of them tell, some moves are instant and the game tells me that. So you want a list of all the, all you, just, you want a list of all the commands, like all the inputs and whatnot that tell you what will go For a character? And stuff? Yes. Like, like, no, you I, think, I, you, want, you think, I want, you think any, I want. Do you think anybody will have the patience to actually go through, all, go through, read all through all that? I mean, they like do that? for an MMO. Why wouldn't they for a, for a fighting game if they want to get good at a fighting game? Like you said, if you want to get good at a fighting game, you have to put the time into it and that's part of the time. Fair. I'll, I will. I will give. I will give you if, that. If if Street Fighter or Tekken or any fighting but I'll game, give you, I will give you. I will give you uh -huh. that. But you. But you, keep in mind that in regards to an MMO compared to a fighting game, you're not. You're just pushing. You're pushing just like one or two buttons. You're not putting. You're not putting any inputs or anything. Remember, all this is also based on your own physical on your own physical ability to play yeah. the game. Uh huh. Instead of just push. Instead of pushing buttons, because you're not gonna. You're not able. To, you're not gonna be able to throw a Hadouken. In Final Fantasy, unless you stack up and be able to throw a token with one punch and not a quarter circle yeah, motion. Yeah, but like, that's... <laughs> motions aren't the, the fucking problem, Jeff. Like, where, where is this argument coming from? Jeff, the problem is I don't know when a Hadouken is an appropriate move to use or what weaknesses it has. Or What's advantages. the difference between a light Hadouken and a medium Hadouken? Please or tell it, me the difference instead of just it's the, it's, assuming it's the, me it's to the figure visual, it out. It's, it's the visual. It's the visual effect that you see after fire. Is that it? Fire. No, it's not. Is that it? It, yes, it, it is. comes like Hadoukens come out at different speeds. They cover different range. They'll do more damage. Yeah, depending on depending on depending on the input you put. Yeah. Right? So explain that difference to me in the game. Don't fucking have me go on YouTube to listen to some jackass explain it to me. That should be in the game. Like they like developers put in the work to put in patch notes. Why can't they just give me a version zero, version zero patch notes on what every fucking move does? Because you're you should you just you just look it up. All right? Do you like do you do you want do you want do you want to say Hadouken cancels? Do you want to say Hadouken cancels into this and stuff like that? No, no nobody just trying out trying nobody out would ever watch any movie if every time you went into a movie it was like oh hey did you read all these articles about like this thing. No? Okay, too bad. <laughs> like, the game should be teaching you it's how the game works. And the fact... Not some fucker on YouTube. And the fact is, like, most fighting games don't. Like, bless Skullgirls for trying their damnedest, because they did, and they had a good system. But goddammit if it was a wasted effort, because they were the only ones that did it. <laughs>
<laughs> like, but like also, I, I shouldn't I'm, have I'm, to like, go I'm to still, play school. I'm still 50 50 because I don't. I don't fucking because for me I don't look I don't make, this is, and this is me this is me because this is my this is my personal thing fighting games I just go in, uh huh, I just go in and that's because uh, you know I I grew up playing fighting games like I said this is just me yeah all right I don't look at I don't I don't look at anything else I just I just see and I try I try to do. Okay, cool. Uh, that works for one specific person. <laughs> what about the rest of the world, Jeff? Like. Fighting games want to expand accessibility. Stop catering to people like you who are just willing to <laughs> fucking get their shit kicked in uh, 700 matches in a row, and then they'll go, yeah, I still like doing this. <laughs> that That's that would be a, wor- a far know? worthwhile... That would be a learn, far yeah. more worthwhile... Uh, uh, like, being able to explain how your game works is a far more worthwhile addition than fucking simple mode that lets me just mash light punch into ultra combo. And then I go, oh cool, I didn't have to learn how to play this, I can just press my win button. Until I get to somebody who fucking actually did put in the time to watch some jackass on YouTube explain frame then you data. Lose the, then you lose, then you, then you, for me, you lose the creativity of it. Like, you don't though! You don't! You yeah, don't lose you do. any creativity no, you by don't. knowing how a system like, works. You just know because yeah. you're learning how the system works and you're learning like what you can jazz out of it. <laughs> Fuck the system. I mean, yes, but also not a fighting system for a game you're trying to play. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, fuck yeah. the U.S. political yeah. <laughs> system, but not the fucking mechanics behind Street Fighter. Yeah, <laughs> just become like a funny game like, anarchist Street now. Like, 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 what, 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 like, the system. I'm just gonna bash my opponent's skull in with my fight stick. <laughs> like, how, like how, how do you, like how? Do, I don't have to learn how to do a do do you... if I just bring in my AR-15. <laughs> Boom, champion of Evo. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck like, this system! I'm just gonna make a bring a macro keyboard to Evo. <laughs> I don't know why shit works, but when I hit this one button, my fucking character pulls out thirty fucking attacks in a row. <laughs> like I, I feel, I feel like. Like, what, what you guys are asking for in regards to tutorial, tutorials, like, really ridiculous. I don't think it is, considering that, like, every other genre puts in the effort. Yeah, every other genre, though, is just one, it's just like, you know, you're either by yourself, you're either playing with a whole group of people pushing one goddamn button, or you're playing a game that has pretty much the same controls as the other game, where you're like, oh, well, playing an FPS, shoot the fucking deal with the right trigger, that's all you need to do. The, the, oh, hey, look, you can just do the scope and all that stuff I mean, like that's that. what fighting games you're are, really you do- press, like, the four buttons to win. <laughs> Press the four, four, four to six button. I, uh-huh. feel like, I feel like you're putting fighting games on like a pedestal, pedestal of complexity, because uh, because first person shooters are not as simple as oh man, if I just hold down the right trigger, I'll win. Uh, <laughs> and I'm I'm like <laughs> like I I'm, I'm not saying I'm saying that fighting games are more are way more complex than than other games. That's not and entirely that, true know? though. Like, I'm not asking games to teach me character matchups, because that's not really something they can realistically do. And having to go online to learn character matchups, which is probably, like, a good 50% to, to being competent in fighting games. Uh, like, yeah, you're, you're, that's just something that you're going to have to learn by playing the game. And that's fine. Uh, I think it would be entirely unreasonable uh, to expect developers to, like balance their characters in such a way that there's always a consistent matchup but like the other 50 percent of fighting games like learning block strings and punishes and uh learning combo strings and whatnot is so obfuscated that it's like to even like fucking be able to to do anything, any of that competently, Dude, the, is hidden behind such a massive wall that it's like, why should I even bother? The Smash Reddit just, the Smash Bros. Reddit just found out, like, this, like, last week or two, that, like, the smoke trails, when your smoke trail stops, like, uh, coming out of your character when you get launched, is the indication for when you can start uh, using inputs again. 
almost almost a year after the game came out. That's a system of that's a that's a system thing, and Smash Brothers does not tell you that at any point in the in the game unless you've like figured it out, unless you've been paying attention to like when you're fucking trying to get out of a launch. <laughs> but that's Smash Brothers though. That's fucking. I mean, it's, it's an example. Oh. It's, it's. I mean, you're just gonna be like, oh, it's fine. You know? It's, okay, okay so hold on. Like, hold on. Like, we have not talked about netcode in like the last half hour. <laughs> like, like, Jeff, Jeff, I just feel like your entire argument is, well, this is the way that I learned how to do it, and everyone else has to do it this Listen, way. Listen, I don't want to do this, but okay, Boomer. I'm just saying, I grew up playing fighting games at the same time as you, and I would fucking love a little bit more fucking transparency on what the fuck the system is. <laughs> Anyways, I'm too, imp I'm too, imp I'm too impatient with tutorials. That's, uh, that's, and that's fine. Then you don't have to use them. But for the rest of us, uh, it'd be really appreciated. Anyways, <laughs> so netcode. So, <laughs> so netcode. Uh, so coming back to Killer Instinct. Uh, Wait, what? <laughs> coming back to Killer Instinct. Instinct has good netcode. So Killer Instinct has probably like the best netcode I've ever played on. Um, yeah, it's probably like were they, the best. Were they using their own custom netcode, or were they using like GGPO or something? I think they were using. I think they, they were using double GGPO. double helix. Yeah, and I think it's GPO. No, I think th wait, I, they were they were made by Iron Galaxy, right? Yeah, Iron Galaxy. Yeah, they were the guys that did the street, the Third Strike one. Yeah, I thought Third, Third Strike, Strike used um, GPO. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so they're using GPO. Yeah, they're using yeah. GPO. Okay. Which is, which is good. I don't know what I don't know what uh what Mortal Kombat uses. I think he uses um, rollback. I, I know X uses rollback. I don't know what Eleven uses. It probably uses the same back. thing. It, yeah, I can't imagine them changing it. Yeah, also, like Injustice wasn't bad online either. Yeah. Also, wouldn't it be like wouldn't it be nice if fighting games like told you when you started playing online, hey, by the way, there's gonna be like a two frame delay. <laughs> uh, what's it called? Does that Guilty Gear does that? It shows the frames how many frames delay there is at the top Rad. when you're when you're online. Cool. Do they also have a? Actually, I wonder. I want to say they do, because I think I saw that option. But doesn't Guilty Gear also let you play offline with a delay? I don't know. I, uh, yeah. Yes, uh, right. Uh, yes, it does with, in the practice mode. Okay, okay, that makes yeah. sense. Um, and I believe to some extent, uh, when they drop the new the new patches for, uh, for Tekken 7, you're able to do that as well, if you go through all your options. Oh, that's, that's rad. But don't quote me on that, because I... Not entirely sure. Nope, it's quoted. It's on my. Oh, it's on my blog. <laughs> no, it's on my blog. All right. Bar yeah. Marcus Knuckle Bomber says this. It's hot off the presses. It's an inside source. <laughs> I, I just the only thing that I have to say left with with the netcode for Street Fighter is that it had to it had to it had to take a fan to do something about it. Yeah. Like that's I. And I saw that article about uh, Ono saying that he wants to win back the trust. Um, I mean, dude, just fucking send this guy a paycheck for like 500 bucks and then just copy that and drop it out officially to everybody. Like, or don't and just fucking plagiarize it and patch it out to everybody. Like, fucking do something. I mean, it's better late than never, right? Because, like, Street Fighter's been out with, like, shitty netcode for, what, four or five years at this point? Yeah. Like, it's, I mean, I guess it, in a set, it's like, well, what's the point of fixing it if we're, like, we're about to move on to the next Street Fighter? But at the same time, you have, like, another Evo coming up, another Capcom World Tour. Yeah, like, all this shit coming up. I think it's in your interest to fix it, even if it is for, like, the last leg of this game's life lifespan. 
Yeah, Evo Japan soon, isn't it? I don't know. Yeah. I believe that was already going on, but I'm not sure. Or it's at the end of this month. Uh, yeah, it's at the end of this month. Evo Japan 2020 is Friday, January 24th to the 26th. Okay, so yeah. Yeah. So, they're probably going to reveal some shit there. They just... Or it gets leaked beforehand. Yeah, like they did with, uh... it's probably going to get leaked. <laughs> like everything does nowadays. <laughs> yeah. Like, Capcom has a really bad has a really bad habit of doing that. Last time it wasn't even... It was on them also with the E-Honda... Um, all the E-Honda poison and that the other lady. Lucia. That was on them. Yeah, that was on them. Jeez. Oh, that's right. Didn't they release it? Didn't it, like, it, it leak on the PlayStation Store or something by accident? Or like Steam or something? Yeah. yeah. Like some shit like that. Or I think Mr. Wizard actually leaked the trailer and acted almost. So. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Like when Smash Brothers accidentally posted their fucking uh, Castlevania soundtrack <laughs> on their channel. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Remember the little tidbit for um, SNK before Terry was revealed? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yep. All right. Cool. Papa Jeff, what you got? What you, what you, uh, what you going to segue us to next? <laughs> I think I got to segue into what's going on in this coming week for you guys. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Are you okay? You feel yeah, attacked? Because <laughs> I feel like I attacked yeah. you. <laughs> when he when he said okay, boomer, that's when I fucking got like, ooh. I don't I don't want to. That, that was you forced my hand. <laughs> There's all right. To to confirm with this, guys. Um, you guys could, there's always been a debate about the, in regards to that, so if you guys are more interested in about the whole tutorial, fighting tutorial debate, um, please talk to somebody who has proper, who has, who has proper, um, proper knowledge of the situation in regards to all that stuff. All right. What, what does that even mean? <laughs> what are you trying like, to say, go, Jeff? Go, go check it, go, go to like, go to like Reddit or some of that and. <laughs> Have people who don't actually know what they're talking oh, about. Oh, there's, there's oh, Discord. Yeah. There's that, that Discords means, out there. Ah, that just means they have to look stuff up yeah. again. <laughs> the podcast should tell you what the podcast is saying. <laughs> we don't know what we're fuck saying. The, most fuck of the, time. the podcast system. <laughs> podcast doesn't require a tutorial system. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> if you'd like, I'll I'll All be right. more than happy to record a tutorial for the podcast on where you can uh, download us on Spotify and YouTube. I'll t yeah. I'll, I'll I'll release the part two where he teaches you how to like download a podcast and how to insert your earplugs into your device. <laughs> <laughs> All right. This podcast is not going to teach us about spacing the <laughs> fucking memory and proper audio Remember, editing. Remember, you got to defrag every six months. <laughs> I can't even remember the last time I defragged my computer. <laughs> yeah. Does, is that necessary anymore? I know that used to be a thing back in the day. Is that... It's still a good idea. Do I need to... I'm going to go to Reddit for this. <laughs> even though Windows should tell me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, think right, Okay, so um, what's what's come? What what are you guys looking forward to? With what are you guys looking forward to within the next couple of days, and whatnot? Um, the Kingdom Hearts DLC. Oh yeah, wait, that's oh, coming yeah, out that comes, soon? comes out on the twenty ninth. Yeah, that and uh, uh -huh. hopefully waiting for some announcement uh, on Smash's last character. Oh, you mean Goku? Yeah, I oh, know. <laughs> I I still hold to my theory. Like, I don't I don't know what it's gonna be. All I know is all right. All I know all I I feel right, it in my it. bones that like the last S, like DLC character is still gonna be a, like another third party, and then the next wave of DLC is gonna be all like Nintendo stuff. So like all all the shit that would normally go into the next Smash is just probably gonna go into this one. So like the fi mm. like the Fire Emblem, right. a new Pokemon starter, some other bull just all like first party shit. If that makes sense. 
All right. Um, let's let's play this game before, if just case if until the next podcast, our um, there is a direct announcement or whatnot. All right. What character do you think do you think is going to be in Smash? Make it a real. Uh, just kind of Goku. Character, that'd be a real pick. <laughs> <laughs> a real pick. Goku. <laughs> I, I have yet to hear any kind of compelling argument. Uh, uh, he's an anime. That it's not Goku. He's an anime character? That he's an anime character? I don't care. Okay. And, uh, the, and Sakurai said that he wouldn't have Goku he did, in it. He did call him out specifically. <laughs> yeah, he did call. Specifically him and Iron Man. <laughs> God damn it. What are, what are, uh, it's a red herring. What are. What are Japanese like weeaboos? Like, what are what are the Japanese people that are obsessed with Americans? Like, uh, they probably just love comic books. Like, like what's like? Do they have a name like we have for weebs? Like, like when they go like, oh man, did you see like this new anime movie that came out? And they're like, ugh, I don't watch that trash. I only watch Marvel and DC films. <laughs> and they probably have to set up a little after school club where they can talk about the latest Joker comic that came out. And then they also can't get dates, and then they smash like their dates finger in a desk, and then they have to like talk to her the next week, and they just don't know what to do and how to bring that up or apologize for it. So then they just go home and they don't just cry because they don't know how to deal with this situation because life didn't prepare them. They didn't know life was going to be this way. So they're constantly just sitting at home with their Iron Mask and Ant Man masks, <laughs> watching their movie. The fucking Docky of Black Widow. <laughs> the Black Widow. Yeah. Or Hulk. Yeah. Oh, oh God, do you understand me? <laughs> what the fuck are you guys fucking talking about? I don't know what Don't worry t- about it, you wouldn't understand. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyways, I think Monster Hunter is probably the last DLC character. <laughs> Not even like mm-hmm. not even like a hunter. Like they just straight up bring in like uh, just the like whole a game, rap, like a rap oh. game. <laughs> I thought you meant like whole, like just the game. You can just play Monster Hunter and Smash Brothers. No man, Brothers. it's gonna be it's gonna be those uh, <laughs> dumb shitty cat things. Uh dude, that what a palico? That yeah. actually wouldn't even be that bad. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm still hedging my bets on on Monster Hunter. I'm probably wrong. But that's fine. <laughs> I'm wrong a lot about a lot of things. I don't think there's any sort of word, like any sort of word or phrase for what you were saying in regards to a Japanese person. It's like a really, really deep. I, I must, I must look further into this. <laughs> is this, is this like America boo? America boo. But uh, so the last character, right? The last character is gonna be Goku. my boy, my boy Funky Kong. No. Funky Kong. <laughs> See, that's the thing is, I don't think that's unrealistic, but I don't think that would be in this deal. I think Funky Kong would be in like the next fighter pack, the, the next DLC, because I think this is just gonna be guest characters. That, yeah, that's 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 how I that's how I feel in my bones. Granted, Sakurai could just say "fuck you," although, and put on like Funky Kong. <laughs> yeah, but I I do possibly believe Funky. We will get Funky Kong. At some point, I would love Funky. And then you get like a side B where he just surfs across the stage. That'd be fucking rad. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and his down B is like like Donkey Kong's, except instead of smashing the ground, he just pulls out a boombox. <laughs> <laughs> or at least come to like get free DLC, right? Get free DLC for Echoes. For, uh, yeah, like an Echo. Yeah. Dude, uh, one of the Smash leakers who apparently has a pretty good track record said that that's a thing. Not free. There's going to be like a super cheap Echo Fighter Pass or something. I don't know if I buy okay. it, but like... I don't know. I have my boy Funky. <laughs> Funky! <laughs> that's what I want. But but like, guest character wise, everyone's just been d- talking about Doom Guy. Fuck it. Why not Doom Guy? <laughs> <laughs> Let's get that Doom Guy in there. I'm sorry. I'm still looking. I'm still trying to find something <laughs> <laughs> in regards to like just the the Japanese oh, equivalent to a Wii I'm, for America. I'm also thing. looking. <laughs> All right, Marcus. <laughs> what about you? Who do you think? Who do you think will be the last character? The last character. Um, I'm kind of with Kyle on this. 
<laughs> as much as as Damn much it. as I don't want Goku. Like, believe me, I don't like believe the only it. reason that I want Goku to to be in Smash is so that all of the playground rumors can finally be uh, the exodia of playground rumors for Smash are is complete. <laughs> And then put my boy Travis touchdown in. <laughs> that actually might be that actually might be the last kick. No, because I think if Travis touchdown were to be put in, it would be in that that second DLC pass. Because I don't I don't I don't know if Travis touchdown is. Cons- I guess yeah, I guess yeah, he yeah, would. I believe yeah, that. he would he, be a third party. He's third person because it's marvelous, right? That makes the normal heroes. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I feel like. I would be fine with anybody as long as it wasn't another Fire Emblem character, to be honest. Bailey, I, I, Bailey, I, I, I just feel like we have there. too many Dude, already. Somebody somebody I made don't... a fucking joke about having like a Pokemon trainer that's Byleth and you just pay, you just switch between the three house leaders. <laughs> that would be actually really cool. And I was just like, I need this. <laughs> Look. In regards for, for me, in regards to third party, I'd give it to either um, Dante or Travis Touchdown, because um, they'll make because uh, it was last year actually that um, they said that um, that the the I think who Hideki? No, it wasn't. It wasn't. I believe that guy. I don't think it's him. I don't think he's in charge of No More Heroes. No, no. For oh, oh. Cry. Okay. Uh, I know. I think that's his no, name. No, Hideki Kamiya. Um, the guy who made the, 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 no, no, the guy who made uh, yeah, Don't Make Cry. Yeah, Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's Kamiya. <laughs> My bad. Um, <laughs> he, you mean the one that works on it now? Yeah, Hideki yeah. Anno works on Evangelion. Shinji for Smash! <laughs> <laughs> who's the, who's the creator of Don't Make Who's Hideki it's Kamiya. It's Kamiya. The original... Yeah. Um. Also, Roastmaster on Twitter and Perpetual Blocker. Oh, maybe I'm just I just can't think of anything. Maybe I'm just, I'm just like uh, oh Hide, Itsuno Hideaki Itsuno, Itsuno, the director for DMC Five. Yeah, he's the one that's yeah. recently been working on it. Yeah. Yeah, he was he, he had a he was talking in regards to like saying that yeah Dante's not Dante, I don't think Dante will be able to be in Smash because um. There is from from his words like there because there's no bit of Devil May Cry game on the Nintendo system, or and he's like yeah you could, I guess you can count Project Cross Zone but that's not I enough, mean they've also know, been porting the other games to the to the Switch yeah. that's why that's why that's why that's why I'm saying like Dante has a high chance now yeah that's fair they've been porting on the Switch and now that there's they did announce Devil May Cry three that's gonna be coming out and you can switch um, you with can switch its, styles in you can switch styles yeah. and stuff. Yeah, and um, so that could be that could be going well with the announcement for Dante for Smash, oh. as well as this is this is what this is just what I want. All right, I just want Dante to I just want Funky Kong to be an Echo Fighter. I want Knuckles to be a playable character, and I want Dante. So it could be Super Smash Brothers Ultimate with featuring Dante from Devil May Cry series, new Funky Kong edition, and Knuckles. You know, and I, I hope, <laughs> I hope just to spite everybody, I hope it's a DMC Dante. <laughs> Don't oh, take it. oh come on! <laughs> PlayStation uh, All Stars already did that. Yeah, so he's never been in a fighting game. But <laughs> and I also hope it's a, I hope I hope you know we get a Fire Emblem character at some point because fuck Marcus. Edelgard would be good because spoilers. No, but um. Mm-mm. Um, but I'll, I'll, I'm going to end it right here for the podcast, guys. Um, there was a lot of, a lot of things that <laughs> said, oh boy. <laughs> but, yeah, um, I, I really have no, I really have no proper way to end this. <laughs> um, that, that was another yeah, that's, great that's, podcast, Jeff. Thank you, <laughs> I guess. Um... You know what? Actually, do you guys do you guys want to plug in anything like where they could where they could find you? Nah, or I'm good. No, <laughs> don't follow me. <laughs> don't follow me on Twitter at yours truly hero. <laughs> uh, 
And don't follow Squishy at Squishel no. at Twitter. No. <laughs> don't follow Marcus at Knuckle Bomber on Twitter. Oh. <laughs> You'll be disappointed. Uh, uh, I do want to plug somebody, though, because we did have a discussion uh, about getting into anime. Um, there is a YouTuber. Uh, his name is Caribou Coon, which I know sounds super racist, but trust me, he's yeah. not. <laughs> Uh, it's it's uh, it's it's in reference to raccoons. Um, but <laughs> I love Caribou raccoons. Coon. Uh, Caribou Coon did a phenomenal job uh, with a video called "How to Get Into Anime." Um, that really does a really fucking great, fantastic job of how to do that and how to expand your taste. So even if you are into anime and you're looking for some methods or some might say a tutorial on how to get into anime. There you go. It's been done. I uh, also just want to follow up the conversation by saying uh, the accepted internet uh, words for somebody obsessed with the America is a Yankophile or... I like that. Or, a, I like that. or hold on, this one's even worse. Uh, Amcanophile. Amcanophile? Yeah. Okay. Reminder, also follow Steve oh, Hotel on Twitter. Kyle, you have a Twitter, right? Good luck finding it. Is it at Issa Kyle? No. I'm going to look this up. <laughs> uh, hold on. Oh. Mm-hmm. Hey, you can grab that. Nobody, There's no mm-hmm. Issa Kyles on Twitter. There's no, yeah, you grab Issa Kyle. <laughs> What the fuck kind of tier list is this? <laughs> yeah, dude. Ed. Uh, please censor that out, Jeff, as that is my actual fucking name. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll censor that out for you. <laughs> <laughs> wow, Knuckle <Dr>. Bomber. <laughs> wow. Alright, bye, guys. Goodbye. Goodbye, everyone.